All right. How's everyone doing this morning? Great. Can you all hear me? Yeah, that's usually not an issue for me. Uh, I tend to move around a lot, so I may come up and get in your face and ask you questions while I'm presenting. Don't get scared. I mean, I've been known to do things of pick someone in the audience, hand them a camera, and say, videotape my presentation for me. So I'm not doing that today. We actually have a professional. How's it going? All right. Welcome to uh, social media strategy for entrepreneurs. How many people here in here are entrepreneurs? So I thought we have 180 minutes. I think there were 80 people or so registered. I thought we would go around the uh, room and everyone give their two minute um, uh, elevator pitch for their, their business. And that way that should take up most of the time and I don't really have to do any work. So let's start over here. I'm just joking, okay. Um, so how many people here are, are students here at FAU? Okay, and the rest of you aren't students? Yeah, it works out that way. Um, do you, the people that aren't students, you all have your own businesses? So when I go like this, that means, you know, raise your hand and I'm raising it high. You can do it too so I can see. All right, excellent, excellent. Um, my name is Murray Eisenwasser, and I'll tell you a little bit more about myself. Uh, first, I want to thank uh, the, the Adam Center for Entrepreneurship for having me speak, because as the people who know me know, there's nothing I like more than speaking. I just like the sound of my own voice. So what we're going to talk about today is social media strategy. Now, we have a saying at our organization, which is called BizTegra. I'll talk about that in a couple of seconds. It's, you know, the world itself has become social. It's no longer a should we do social media. It, it's a social world. Everything we do nowadays, and we'll talk about this in a little bit, everything we do nowadays revolves around the social world that we're in. And what we do a little bit differently is, first of all, we'll talk about this, we don't believe there is such a thing as a social media strategy. Which is kind of interesting for an agency that if you go to our website, we talk about social media strategies. But we don't believe there is such a thing as a social media strategy. It's about making your marketing and your business so inherently social. Okay, and that's what we're going to kind of talk about today. Now the other thing is we only have three hours. This is normally a six hour workshop um, that we put on all over the country. I've taken, I don't know, 30 slides out. So we're, and even in six hours, we're just skimming the surface. Okay. Um, so just kind of keep that in mind. We're not going to be able to get too deep into any one topic. We're going to talk a little bit about our thinking and, and a little bit about our approach. I actually took the slides about our process out that we normally do in the workshop because it's just too in depth for three hours with all the other things we need to talk about. All right. This work is the intellect property of Bristol Inc. Blah, 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 blah. Okay? I got that? Good. Let's move on. All right. This is a social media workshop. How many of y'all are on Twitter? Facebook, have a blog. Hey, knock yourselves out while I'm presenting. Feel free to post about it. And what I'd actually normally do, which I didn't on this one, is I actually usually give, and we'll talk about why later, um, suggested tweets throughout the course of the presentation. But tweet, post, blog about it. I'm not gonna be offended. Text, take a picture, not a problem. All right, so, hello. So I'm Murray Eisenwasser. I am the strategy practice lead for BizTegra, and I'm also the founder of BizTegra. And we'll talk about who BizTegra is in a little bit. Let me tell you a little bit about myself, because I'm, sure, I'm sure you're asking yourselves, why is this guy up here talking about this? Prior to BizTegra, I was head of global marketing for an agency called Sapient. Has anyone heard of Sapient? No one? Any of, you, any of you marketing majors? Anyone? Who's a marketing major here? No? Yeah? You haven't heard of Sapient? The largest digital agency in the world. So I ran all of their marketing programs. Prior to that, I worked for another agency called Razorfish, where I did client strategy. And Razorfish is the other largest digital agency in the world. And I've been doing this online thing since the mid-90s. I started off as an IT guy doing management and IT consulting with what's now Accenture and kind of went out on my own in the, in the early 90s and started doing the social, this, this online stuff uh, about 95. So I've been doing it almost as long as it's kind of been around from a business sense. And it's evolved, but it hasn't really evolved that much. 
I still truly believe, and I say this as a joke, that I really believe this interactive stuff is going to take off one day. Okay? And especially when we start talking about social, I really think it's going to take off one day. It's fundamentally changing the world. And I think we're at the beginning stages of that. Truly. Right? So when someone's up here calls themselves a social media expert, I mean, they've only been doing it a couple of years like I have, right? And how long does um, Malcolm Gladwell say it takes to become an expert in something? 10,000 hours. There's 2,000 work hours in a year, which means that some of us work 4,000 hours in a year. I don't even know if there's that many in a year. So the most that somebody could be into this is maybe 10, 12,000 hours. We're all still learning. I tend to think I'm a little bit further ahead than other people because I got into it a little bit earlier, had a different approach that we've been working with our clients. And so we're going to talk about that in a little bit. So let me tell you a little bit about this Tegra. Um, we're an agency. We're based here in South Florida. Um, we do education such as this, help clients with their strategy. We have about 50 developers uh, down in Argentina, actually, to do development work. Um, and then we do ongoing engagement, which involves a lot of different things. Okay? But here's a little video that we just had created about us. I'll talk about that a little later. Most business owners have heard of or are using social media. But just because you've signed up for all those social media websites doesn't mean you know what you're doing. And without strategy in place, you could be wasting a lot of time and a lot of money in social media. And that, my friends, is where BizTagger comes in. They're going to develop a strategy for your social media plans. It can be a big challenge to navigate tweets, likes, pins, tubes, and all other aspects of social media. For BizTagger, they're here to help. BizTagger helps organizations define their online strategies to support their business goals. They then develop a social media solution to help achieve these goals. Because what's the point of having goals if you're not achieving them? So what makes BizTagger so different from other marketing agencies? Well, that nasty word eyeballs, they're going to blow that thing out of the water. And I don't mean they're going to get you tons of eyeballs. They care more about being social. They want engagement, interaction, and a long-term strategy for your social media presence. And don't just take my word for it. Contact BizTagger today and ask for some case studies or testimonials. And if you need somebody who can give a presentation or a workshop on social media, Right there, Ms. Anybody follow IWearYourShirt.com? So I've done it for four years now. You should check it out. Basically, you pay them. I know Jason. That's Jason Sadler. He's the founder of it. Um, uh, you pay them. They wear your shirt for the day, and they do a video. And he, they're in Jacksonville. So every year, I go up there, and we do an hour-long social media talk. Um, so we, our day was February 15th this year. Um, you know, again, it's one of those, we'll, we'll talk about that in a little bit. We'll, br we'll, bring, we'll bring Jason back in a little while. All right. So we, we work with a number of organizations, both very large and entrepreneurial, as a matter of fact. We don't tend to focus on them or, or have a lot of clients in the middle. It's, it's at one end or the other of the spectrum. We've worked with some startups where we have literally brought them live online and are basically their ongoing development and strategy team. And we work with large global brands. Now, most of the global brands, we have NDAs that we can't really tell you who they are. So I'm not going to tell you that it's SeaWorld, Wilson, Tupperware, uh, Successories, and Pepperidge Farm. Okay, I never told you that. If you guessed from the pictures, that's your, you know, your, your capability. Um, and what we hear from our clients, and we're doing these workshops and doing pr uh, presentations is, traditional marketing, whatever that means, is not driving growth like it used to. They, they understand that there's value in this social stuff, but they're not really sure how to truly leverage those relationships. And we'll talk in a little bit about the couple of mistakes that most people are making as to why that they can't leverage those relationships. Right? It's getting harder and harder and harder to truly market in the traditional sense. How many people here are, let's say, oh, under 30? You picked up your newspaper off your driveway this morning? No. No? You, you, you were listening to your radio in the car? Yeah. Yeah? Really? It wasn't, you know, because I plug my iPhone right in. I don't listen to someone else's music. I listen to mine. Right? Um, you get magazines delivered to your house? You do? Really? Still? Wow. Incredible. You don't fast forward through commercials on TV, I'm assuming. Right? Okay. Harder and harder to do traditional marketing. 
because nobody's listening anymore. People don't want to be marketed to, right? They want to be engaged. So here's the agenda. Okay, we'll get through that. Let's take a little look at what viral marketing. There's no denying it. If we don't do something quite soon, marketing-wise, our leadership position will be going down the drain faster than we can look. Don't you think you're overreacting a bit, my dear colleague? Our branding is still absolutely dazzling. My point is that without a decent print or a TV campaign, we will be sitting in for out of the discussion from now on. We are not living in the dark ages anymore. Brand new marketing instruments have emerged, which is also the reason for summoning this meeting. I want to discuss this topic today. Now, with all due respect, but what are the options besides print or TV? My honorable colleagues, from now on we will be pushing the envelope in terms of advertising. Viral marketing is the big magic word. A brand new field. Viral marketing, what else is new? I think I'm about to wet my pants. There's nothing special anymore. Every little mechanic is using it for advertising nowadays. The difference is that we have more dough than the little mechanic. Spending any budget on such mumbo jumbo is like throwing money out of the window. It eludes me how you can ever fall for BS like this. You will never trigger a single purchase decision with. No, I would rather spare the money. And I would spare myself this glass headed blagging of yours if I was you. Viral marketing is an absolutely powerful advertising instrument you know nothing about. Now here we go again. Behold, here comes Mr. Radar. It's amazing to see how you still think your little black advertiser suit is something to write home about. The only thing missing now is a black turtleneck sweater and a <laughs> Would you mind saying that again, please? That's enough. Leave the man alone, Mr. Vader. If you say so. <laughs> a sweaty bonehead. I'm utterly sick and tired of this. I refuse to listen to this bunch of morons anymore and therefore I'm making an executive decision. As of today, our complete advertising budget goes into viral marketing. All right. I understand that's like a takeoff on a, on a very popular movie. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that, that's actually good and bad. I mean, the whole focus on viral marketing. That end part there gets me. All of our budgets going into this. I have literally had, I was once driving in a place literally called the middle of nowhere, Florida. And I was surprised I got self-service in my car. And I got a call. And it was from the global, global VP of marketing for a major sporting goods manufacturer, not the one that I said was the client. And she called me up, said, I got your name from this other person that was a common acquaintance. And basically, what we've decided to do is we have decided to move all of our, our budget globally into this. And I'm like, really? As a guy at an agency, what's the first thing that I thought when I heard that? Touching. I mean, you know, right? This is cool. And I blew it. I ruined it because I asked a question. And I asked her, what did I ask her that blew it for me? Why? Because this is a manufacturer of products for sports that have magazines dedicated to those sports, that have cable channels dedicated to those sports, that have major tournaments all over the world dedicated to those sports that are just huge and watched by literally billions of people. And they're going to take all of their money and they're going to move it online and move it over to social? Really? So I started asking questions. Well, why are you doing this? Well, we're spending a lot of money. We're not really sure what the return is. I said, so it's not that it's not working. You just don't know what piece of it is or isn't working. It's, it's a tracking issue that you have. It's not about shifting everything over to this. Social media, and that's why the, the, we're talking about some of the mistakes that people are making. The mistakes are that they are viewing social media as this panacea that's going to save our business. And it's just not. Social, do, do you all enjoy being on Facebook and using Twitter? <laughs> yeah? OK. By the end of today, you won't. Because this is hard work. There's a lot to know. There's a lot to do. Every time I have someone who takes our workshop or ends up working with us as clients, you know, I always say to them, you're going to hate social media by the before I'm done. OK? Because it's just no longer fun after that. OK? There's a lot that you have to do. And so we started talking, and they, they actually became a client. And you know, we did a lot of work for them, because it's not about moving everything. 
It's about incorporating these platforms and, and these processes and these techniques into what you are doing in an inherent way. Okay? It's making your marketing and your business more social. Th does that make sense? All right. In the old world, it was about the TV model. Who here watches Mad Men? They just announced the new season, right? No, what, really? That's it? Two people? Wow, do you guys live in caves? What? It's a huge TV show. But I watch it, and I sit there, and I think to myself, how the heck did they do it? They had no metrics, no analytics, no way to capture the audience, and that's why they had this model, which was you spend a whole bunch of money, do these massive TV or billboard or print buys to maybe, maybe find the couple of people in those audiences that maybe at that point in time were actually looking for the product or service that you were selling. Because they had no mechanism to truly target. Right? For the people watching, right? two seasons ago, there was that woman that came on that was talking about, oh, I have all this data. And they were like, data? We don't need data. We just need to have fun creative. And there was kind of like you know, the batting of heads between her and like the agency owners. Because this data thing, whereas now it's all about the data. It's all about the data. Okay? And also, like we talked about, targeted the masses. There was no true targeting. It was, you know, huge eyeballs, lots of eyeballs, and we're just going to put an ad out there and hope that we catch someone. And it was all about the product, right? I mean, what's interesting about Mad Men is when the, the main character is Don Draper, and he gives these when he's pitching to a client. And I can relate to this because once in a while I actually get to pitch to a client. And he gives these impassioned, emotional, you know, stories of, of, of like this marketing and advertising campaign. And when he unveils it, it's about the product. I mean, it's 100% it's product based, right? He talks about it in these emotional terms, but it's all about the product. And it was only one way, right? They were talking to us. There was no talking back to them. There was no communication back. It was all one way. And I don't know if you remember this, but it interrupted to get our attention. Uh, how, any of y'all from uh, like the New York area? Okay, I, I'm not, but whoop. That didn't work. All right. Do y'all remember this? Here we go. You remember these commercials? Yeah. All right. Interrupting you. You're watching a show, a football game, and what did he do? He got right in your face and interrupted you. How many of you like the ads that are on Facebook? Right? Would you, do you, do you, will you want, when you log into Facebook, a page to come up showing you an ad before you get to your friend's content? Will you like when you close, would you like when you close Facebook before it lets you leave, an ad coming up that you have to click through? Would you like that? Well, by the way, that's coming. Okay. But no, we don't want to be interrupted. We're living our lives. We're doing our, our, we're doing our stuff. Right? So, so that was what it was like. Honestly, until fairly recently. And what we're seeing a lot of clients and organizations do is they're just taking that same model, targeting the masses, one-way communication, interrupting, and they're just saying, we're going to take that same model and we're just going to do it on social media. Well, guess what? Doesn't work as well. All right. So what are we going to talk about today? Have you all seen this? This, this jump on the bandwagon, social media, very kind of famous social media image. Well, we are not going to talk about that today. So I actually was giving a funny story. Well, I think it's funny. Uh, a present, one of these presentations, one of these workshops, and one of the guys who was attending um, actually owned a small agency like ours. And so I try to, when I have the people's names, I go to their websites. I like to bring them in. And guess what was on the home page of their website was this image. It's not about jumping on the bandwagon. I'm not saying you shouldn't be out there testing these things and learning about these things, 
But it's not about getting on Facebook. It's not about getting on Twitter. It's about using those platforms to further your goals. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. So what are we going to hopefully, oh, well, let's, here. That's actually from Microsoft, believe it or not. Okay, uh, I'm not sure what that message is for coming from Microsoft, but it's interesting that they put that awesome video together. I love that, sweetheart. I mean, how condescending could you get, right? And that, I mean, that that encapsulates, you know, when, when there's a couple of people. Well, let me tell you, sorry. So I, I I've been out here kind of about on this social media speaking circuit for a long time now, probably about four years. And my original presentation was, you're all doing social media wrong, and yes, I really do think so. And it was actually 140 characters, that entire title, when I, when I did it. And I literally got into a discussion at a conference. And when I say discussion, I'm not saying discussion. Um, with some other people who were out there on the speaker circuit who pulled me aside. And m what my message was, this needs to be like regular marketing. It's all the things we're going to talk about today. You know, it's about metrics. It's about ROI. It's about driving revenue. You know, it's about making your business more social. And they pulled me aside and they said, Murray, you need to stop talking about social media this way because it's not about that. It's about, you know, transparency and relationships and community. And I'm like, yes, you're right. That's how you do it. But as marketers, the end goal is what? What are we trying to do as marketers at the end of the day? Revenue. But there's three reasons for marketing. Um, you know who Jeff Hazlett is? He was the former CMO of Kodak. Uh, he's written a couple of books recently. I mean, he says there's three things. When he was a CMO, three things that, that when someone comes with a program, he's like, does it fill one of these three things? Increase revenue, decrease costs, or increase customer satisfaction, which leads to what? Increased revenue. Okay? And we basically agreed, myself and these people, to disagree. What I literally ended the, the conversation with is, tell you what, you go drive transparency and community for your clients, and I'll drive revenue for mine. Well, guess what? I've seen these people talk recently. And guess what they're saying? Oh, social media, it's all about metrics, it's all about ROI, it's all about driving revenue for people. Okay? So I used to use this, I don't know if it's an illusion or a simile or a metaphor, and, and nobody likes it, but I like it. People viewed social media, and so I'm going to apologize in advance. Tough, deal with it, okay? Uh, people view social media as this pristine white robed virgin up on the hill that was unapproachable and unassailable, that couldn't get dirty. You want to know something? 
She's a prostitute down here with us. We're marketers. Our job is to drive revenue for our clients, for our businesses. That is the only reason we do, we do marketing. And if you're going to do social media, now there's a way to do it and a way to do it right. It's about driving revenue. If you're not doing that, don't do it. <coughs> there are still people out there who disagree with me on this. So what are we going to talk about? It's, your, it's about your business. It's about your customers, your competitors. It's about your brand and your products. And it's about how to sell and market in a social world. Because we have a whole presentation that we do for clients usually. I've done it publicly once or twice. It's 20 trends that are going on out there. And it's all about how the world itself has become social and the ramifications of what that means. There are 20 trends that are really driving us to this social world across the world. The world's just become social. So in traditional marketing, as we talked about, it was one way. It was brand to customer. It was push and interrupt, and all the content was brand generated. right? And, and, and that was ori the original marketing. right? When John Wanamaker from um, Gimbals, I believe, it was Gimbals or Macy's, said, you know, half my advertising is wasted. I'm just not sure which half. Right back in, like I think, the 1890s. All they had was brand. And then somebody came up with the idea, hey, we could mail stuff to people, right? Send them postcards and letters, right? And get them to do something, maybe fill it out or call an 800 number. So then you had brand or direct. And I don't know, I mean, I've been doing, I'm a little bit older than I look, I think. Um, it used to be the conversation in marketing circles was, are you a brand marketer or are you a direct marketer? Like there was real, literally this separation between the two, right? In today's world though, you still have brand marketing, you still have direct marketing, but now you have social marketing which adds in that engagement, that loyalty. It's multi-way, brand to customer, customer to brand, customer to customer, customer to customer, okay? Um, it's participatory, and you have both brand and user-generated content. Your company's story is going to be told by other people, and yourself, right? Does, does that all make sense? Because this is the kind of the crux of how you need to approach it. Let me just talk, I'll give you a little anecdote about approach. So I had a client, it was a um, convention and visitors, visitors bureau, um, and I don't know if you've heard, but the economy, has over the past four years or so tanked a little bit. And guess what people weren't doing as much? Tra who, whose phone is that? It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Um, so their entire marketing focus had been, historically, convincing people to come to their destination. Right? They were spending money in Times Square. They were spending money you know, in Detroit and Chicago. They're based here in Florida. Right? Uh, that was their whole marketing focus. Well, when the economy turned, what they started focusing on was, well, we're going to focus on less on convincing people to come here, but when people c do come here, we want them to spend more. We want to get a bigger share of their wallet. Okay. So I had my quarterly planning session with them, and the, the three people that comprised the marketing team walked through the door, and I swear, before they were through the door, they came in and said, um, we need to get on Facebook, we need to get on Twitter, and we need to develop a, a mobile version of our website. Right? I was like, oh, good morning. Uh, and what was the first thing I thought? Cha-ching. Cha-ching. <laughs> right? And then what did I do? What did I, do? I ruined it by asking why. <laughs> And they said, well, our boss came in to us, who ran the Convention and Visitors Bureau. Our boss came in last night and said, when you speak to Murray tomorrow, tell him. We want to get on Facebook, we want to get on Twitter, we want a mobile version of our website. And so what did I immediately think? Ch Ch All together. Cha-ching. Ch 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 and what did I do? <laughs> I ruined it by asking why. And what did they say to me? They said, well, that's what we're here for you to tell us. And I'm like, OK. How are we going to use Facebook? How are we going to use Twitter? Oh, we don't know. And why are we doing a mobile version of a website? Well, we don't know. I said, okay, let's talk about it. Has your marketing changed recently? What is your focus for marketing? And we talked about how it changed to convincing people once they were in the destination to spend more. And I said, okay, now, with that in mind, let's talk about Facebook. What could we do with Facebook to drive people to spend more? What could we do with Twitter to drive people that once they're here to spend more? 
What could we do? I mean, is, is a mobile version of your website really going to help engender that? Or is it just kind of a checkbox that somebody wants because they want a mobile version? Do you know, so, so this CVB is, is in a little town in central Florida called Orlando. I don't know if you've heard of it. It's a major tourist destination. Do you know that 40% of the people who fly into the Orlando airport don't have a hotel? They do it when they land? And I had them re-verify this. So would a mobile version of the website be appropriate? Or would a sign, text hotel to this number, and we will send you four hotels that are having specials? And what we did is brainstorm with the focus on what are you trying to achieve, as opposed to, we need to get on Twitter. And we came up with a whole slew, probably in, a, in like that hour and a half, 20 different programs that we could implement to help achieve those goals. Mobile version of the website was not appropriate. A, text SMS program might be. Twitter used the same way and then Facebook is a destination to drive people to do other things. Within an hour and a half we came up with 20 ideas. Just by shifting the focus to what are we trying to achieve. All right. All right. Have you all seen this social media revolution? How big social media actually has become? Any, anyone seen this? You'll know I ask a question because my voice kind of goes up at the end. Any of those statistics surprise you? Yeah. The what? Uh, yeah. It has invaded our lives in such a fundamental way. So um, we're in the middle of this revolution. We do not see what's happening. OK, let's go back five years. And if I would have said to you, five years ago we're talking. I'm going to have a phone five years from now where I can download apps, watch video, access all of my information, and do everything I want. Oh, camera, video camera, high def. You guys would have looked at me and said, apps? What? Video on your phone? What? Are you crazy? Right? How many of y'all have iPhones or Android phones? OK, you can't even buy a phone without a camera anymore. Smartphones just this past month have now sold more than regular phones across the world. Okay, What's that? More than laptops. More than laptops. Laptop four years from now? I'm going to say two years from now. Some of you have laptops here? Not going to happen. 
they're gone. Okay, laptops are gone. It's all going to this. Okay, how many of y'all sit around, watch TV, with other people in the room? <laughs> and each of you has an electronic device on your lap <laughs> where you're looking things up, checking your email, looking at Facebook. See, again, there's a question. Right? Th this is where it all has gone. Okay? But because we're in the middle of it, we don't actually see it happening. The pace of change is accelerating to such an absolutely dramatic extent. All right. Let's talk about the one or two mistakes that everyone's making. This, these were actually some of the original slides in that original presentation. And people are still making these two mistakes. All right. Let's, let's do another poll. How many of you all who have businesses ha are doing something social media wise for them? Raise your hands. Raise your hands. Hi. All right. Why? Why did you originally do that? It's easy. It was easy? Try to get some support from people in, around my age group. Try to get support from people around his age group? More recommendations. Recommendations? Marketing is more precise. Marketing was more precise? Up the SEO. Up the yeah. SEO? Absolutely. Social and SEO, we'll talk about that a little later. Yep. Same. All right. I presented literally in front of thousands of people and ask these same questions in every single presentation. And three people, all women, strangely enough, three people came back to me and said, revenue out of those thousands of people. Let me ask the question a different way. How many of you all for your businesses do traditional marketing? And by traditional, I mean everything from print to broadcast to um, email or search. None of you do traditional marketing? Why did you, why, what, 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 give me an example of a program that you do. Yes, you. Um, yeah. I do email marketing. Yeah, why? Because I collect specific databases and I want to drive targeted advertisements to those people that I've met. So I organize them. Why? Oh. You tell me how you do it. Why do you do it? To get more customers. Oh, customers. You had your hand up. Yeah. What, like what kind of program? Um, we actually still do hand-in-hand -hand flyers. Why? Um, more of a warm introduction. No, but you tell me again how. Why? <laughs> Why are you handing those flyers out? Why do you? More revenue. More revenue. To this day, I ask that question and I say, why do you do in the social program? I never hear revenue. I ask about any traditional program, it's always about revenue. As a marketer, who is spending other people's money, what we call opium, right? That sickens me. It's always about revenue as a marketer. Now, there are different mechanisms to do that, building a community, openness, transparency, customer service, all, fine. The reason we're doing marketing is to drive the business. Marketing is the engine that drives the business. If you're not doing it to drive that business engine, don't do it. All right? So this is what I was kind of taught in business school. Businesses have goals. Who here has a business? Who has an answer? You in the back. What are your goals for the business this year? Uh, to increase revenue. To Everyone wants to increase revenue. What, how much? Goals have two things. They have a number that is both discrete and measurable. Decrease rev increase revenue by how much? By 200%. 200%. A business goal has a number. Why? We want to measure it at the end of the year. Based on those goals, we're going to create strategies. She wants to, I don't know what type of business you have. What type of business do you have? A real estate broker. Real estate brokerage. The way she is going to increase revenue by 200%, you fo focus here in Palm Beach County? Pardon me? Where, where, what's your niche? In Boca Okay. The way she's going to increase revenue by 200% is she's going to expand from Boca Raton up to Palm Beach. I don't know if that's what it is, but I'm giving an example. All right? The way I'm going to um, decrease costs is by consolidating my, my distribution centers. Every business has goals, and based on those goals, you come up with a strategy of how you're going to achieve it. <laughs> right? Based on those strategies, you then come up with campaigns. 
that answers the question of who are you going to talk to, what are you going to say, what's the call to action, you know, all those marketing type questions. Based on those campaigns, then you decide on the tactics. Or at least this is the way it should be done, right? How am I going to, if I'm expanding to Palm Beach, how am I going to get people to give their listings to us or have us drive them around for hours on end while they're like not liking the stairs at every place we go to, right, that kind of thing, right? How are we going to do that? We're going to hand out flyers, we're going to take out um, radio ads, we're going to send out mailings. What are the tactics that we're going to do? Now people always talk about a social media strategy. Where does social media fit into this? Well, first of all, do you all agree or not that this is kind of the way marketing should work? Business goals drive strategies. We create campaigns to support those strategies. And based on those campaigns, we then determine which tactics we're going to use. Would you agree? People talk about a social media strategy. Where does that fit in? What is social media? I'm sorry? Yeah, it's a tactic. In fact, there ain't no such thing as social media. You have platforms and, and, and techniques and, and approaches that are social, that are just like every other tactic at your disposal. And the way you need to do is you need to integrate it with other tactics. And I'll show you if we get, to, if we get time. You know, so a campaign that we did for one of our clients where we integrated the real world, email, um, social, I mean, all kinds of things to drive to a goal. All right? Basically, there is no such thing as a social media strategy. It's a business strategy and a marketing strategy, both of which need to be social in nature. Does that all make sense? Anyone disagree? Because you're free to leave. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like I tell the people who work for me, the quiche action in the back works for us. I'm like, you know, when I want your opinion, I'll give it to you. Um, <laughs> I don't. I do, actually. <laughs> all right. It would be like saying, hey, I'm going to print out a million postcards and mail them out today. Nobody would ever say that. Whereas to this day, if I go to any one of my clients who know me and know my views on this, and I say, I want to develop a Facebook page for you or another Twitter account, guess what they're going to say? OK. If I go to them and say this, guess what they're going to say? I'm going to have 100 questions that I'm going to have to be ready to answer. Who's going to print it? What's going to say? What's the call to action? Does the call center know we're going to do this? Is there is our discount management system ready to do this? You know, a hundred questions. Okay, a social program is the same as every other kind of marketing program. The same questions need to be asked. The same answers need to be ready. Need to be driving to the same thing. Otherwise, I'm telling you, you are wasting your time, and you're going to be one of those people. Who goes, social media doesn't really work to drive our business. All right. So the first mistake that people make is they're viewing social media as the strategy as opposed to a component of your strategy. That's number one. There are other mistakes. I was thinking about a third one last night, and I always think about the third one. I can never remember by the time I get to the PowerPoint to enter it in, but we'll come up with it. This is the other one. They go to Facebook, and they look at Lady Gaga and her 60 million fans that she got in thir three months. All right. They look at you know Rihanna and Eminem. Do you know who the number seven? Like he was in the top ten, and he still is for for a really long time. Was uh, Vin Diesel actually has a huge Facebook page, right? And they look at that, and guess what they say? They say this to me all the time. What do you think when you see that? Get me some of that, <laughs> right? I want that. I want sixty million fans. Okay, and my response is, you're not Lady Gaga, <laughs> and if you were. I'll get you 120 million. Okay? People see this. And what's the first thing that they do that you've all for your businesses probably done? You create a Facebook page and you invite the 120 people, that's the average number of people that people are connected on Facebook to become fans. And a percentage of those become fans, and then it sits there. And what's the question absolutely everyone asks after that? Well, the first question they ask after they've done this and created this Facebook page, what do you ask? What's next? Do like what, what do I do now? What do I do? I have this Facebook page. My mom's on there, and people I went to high school with. <laughs> Maybe, maybe one or two customers who, you know, because they like me, they, they said yes. What do I do now? This is the other mistake. Question? No, you get people to share what you 
you have. And that's, I think that's one of the secrets. Really? You have a Facebook page? Do you have people coming to your Facebook page? Do you know what the percentage is of people who come back to a Facebook page after they like it is? Not too many. 0.08% <laughs> or less. And that's for major pages. That's for pages that actually have true fans. We have clients that are brand names that have true fans. No one ever goes back to your Facebook page. Not ever. I mean, I have major corporations say to me, we're going to get rid of our website, and we're going to just have a Facebook page. And I'm like, you're idiots. <laughs> Sorry, did I just drop an F-bomb? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. Can we edit that out? <laughs> yeah, there's going to be a few more later. Anyone have issues with F-bombs? I'm going to try and refrain, but I, 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 it's, it's just, I, I'm so passionate about this because people are just doing it wrong. So this is the other mistake they make. They see this, and what do they do? They go right to Facebook. They create a Facebook page. They go right to Twitter. They create a Twitter account. You know, they're, they're on Pinterest now. Woohoo! Uh, okay, what do you do now? What's the plan? And what that means to me is they're starting at the wrong end. Facebook, I'm not saying don't go do it, create the page, get the name, do the land grab, same thing with Pinterest, same thing with Google Plus, with all the, I'm not saying don't do that, but don't expect it to be driving your business because there is a boatload of work that needs to be done ahead of time. Content strategies, ongoing content programs. How, how are you going to integrate your existing marketing? It's not about the Facebook page. It's about all those other things first. Facebook's the last thing you should be doing. So you never have to ask the question, what do I do now? Does that all make sense? OK. Yeah, so we better hurry up. Some quick examples of the people that are um, doing things. A lot of these originally came from people telling me back in the day, I don't hear this anymore, oh, social won't work for our business because. Right? The conversation changed last November and people stopped saying that and they started saying, how do we make it better? How do we use social? Right? So I um, got off the phone with someone and they said, oh, it won't work for our business because we have such a specific clientele. And so I'm like, okay, what if you had the purple store? What would happen? So I went and I searched on Facebook. This, the, some of these examples are a little bit old. But by the way, you know, Facebook is changing this month, right? If you have a business page, it's changed. By March 31st, it's going to be totally different, right? And that's the other beauty of these platforms, especially Facebook. They change on you. This, this hands better. Like that. OK. If you own the purple store, there's a, gr there's a group out there of 151,000 people that have put up their hands and told everyone else they know, I love the color purple. If you have the purple store, you can engage these people. Right? That's a marketing program in and of itself. Right? The purple product of the month club. So then I thought, okay, maybe that was too broad. Purple was just, you know, who's not, who doesn't like purple? Right? Actually, you, you like purple. Nice. Sure. Right? So I'm like, okay, what about purple shoes? Went and searched for purple shoes. And guess what I found? A group of people. I'm assuming mostly women, although do I, I do like my purple pumps. <laughs> 34,000 of them who like purple shoes so much that they're put, willing to put up their hand and tell everyone they know they like purple shoes. And I'm like, OK, what about purple pens? There's a purple pens group page. 2,300 people. If you own the purple pen store, guess what? You found your market. Do you not understand? Remember we talked about the whole Mad Men thing and what they couldn't do? What couldn't they do? Were you guys actually listening? What couldn't they do back in the 50s and 60s and even in the 70s? Speak up. I'm talking about Target. Couldn't target. I wake up every morning and I thank these social platforms for doing my job for me. They have segmented the world for me in such a way from a demographic information perspective, from a psychographic perspective. You know, as marketers, we look for what? You know, aside from all the demographic stuff, right? We want to find out people's hopes, wants, fears, uncertainties, desires, likes, and dislikes. That's what we market to, right? Guess what? They've done that for us. Okay. So if you own the purple product store, and you can engage this. By the way, I went back to kind of update these numbers. And I couldn't even find these, these pages or groups. Because the last time I looked, and I typed in the word purple, which means all the pages on Facebook that have the word purple in it. Oh, actually, I just got this. It has a laser. Let's see if we can get it to work. Woohoo! 
15,000 pages, more than 15,000 pages that have the word purple in the title on Facebook alone. And that's a little bit old. I'm sure it's gone up by now. There's your market. Right? And actually, there is a purple product store, purple store that's online. <laughs> and they've just recently became social. All right. I get the whole, my customers are local. Oh, it's for the big businesses. Bull. Here is a uh, Sega Fredo Cafe in Panama City, Panama. Uh, there was another one that was from uh, uh, Adapazan, Turkey, but I couldn't find it again to update the numbers. Right? That had thousands of people, a small village outside of Ankara in Turkey. So, you know, and here's another Sega Fredo. I was doing some research for a client. That's how we came up with these. 4,600 people on their Facebook page that they're having conversations with. Are you all familiar with what a Sega Fredo is? It's a uh, Starbucks with sandwiches. You'll find them in, in Miami a lot. They're starting to come up this way. Seen them in some airports. Hey, where should we go to get some coffee with sandwiches? Oh, I just was on the Sega Fredo page. Let's go there. Oh, I just got a thing from Sega Fredo. Let's go there. How many extra sandwiches or coffees do they need to sell to have a really good day? I don't know, 20 extra customers? With 4,600 there, I think you could get 20 extra customers in a day. Right? That's all that it is. We work with a publisher. And our goal with this publisher, we want to sell 10 extra copies of every book. They, spell, they, they, they sell 1,000, they publish 1,000 books a year, 10,000 books extra at, these are expensive books, 150 bucks a pop on average. At some point, you start talking about real money with incremental increases doing social programs, <coughs> all right? I get the whole, my industry is just different. So here's uh, Susan uh, Fraser. I don't know if you can see what it says there. We're here to help after losing a loved one. She's an end of life consultant, an aftercare consultant, right? Death care consultant, which is a topic we here in this country really don't like to talk about. Other parts of the world, not, they don't really mind as much, but we don't like to talk about this stuff. And she has built a community uh, at that time, which is, I guess is a little bit old, 1,228 followers. I mean, if she can do it, none of us have any excuse, right? And then, you know, you can look, here's all these people that are just like her on, on Twitter who do a similar thing. The death care industry is social. And this was actually done work, the research we did for a client that uh, is the largest cremations company in the country, right? It's a dead job, but it's always looking up. Um, <laughs> <laughs> sorry. I have a question. Sure. Uh, the, the previous uh, page. Yeah. Maybe you've answered, and I'm sorry if I'm repeating something. But you take a subject like that. Yep. She's got a thousand something followers. Yep. She created a page. Where did the thousand something followers come from? Just being out there, probably talking about it. Um, being out there, joining in the conversations that were already out there about the topic. You know, we, uh, on, on, on platforms like Twitter, and we'll talk about this in a little bit, because there's lots of other platforms in what has become now the main five. It used to be the main three, right? On, on all of these platforms, whether it's the big ones like Facebook or smaller specific ones, people are having conversations about what you're doing. Join in those conversations. They'll start following you because so what social media is for the most part about. Now, if you, who here, does anyone here have a business where it requires someone to walk through the door to sell to them? You know, like a restaurant or bar or store. <coughs> Aside from an, a business like that, where you can actually drive incremental revenue that day using these pro, using these tools and platforms, it's about consideration set. It's about establishing yourselves as the real estate people in Boca. So when those people, which is why you do, you send out every week, you send out stuff, right? right? Because when somebody finally, five years after sending them stuff, spending all that money, they decide, hey, we want to sell our house. Or their parents are moving down. Or their kids are moving down. And they've just gotten something in the mail. And they're like, oh, we just got something from these people. Let's go call them. Same thing. It gives you that excuse to continuously get in front of people who have raised their hand, who have said, I'm actually interested in this. Again, that's how you do social, is personal, personal engagement. Absolutely. Okay. Anyone here do business to business? Because you cannot use social to do business to business, right? Because businesses are different, 
right, than, 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 than consumer advertising, right? Because we're actually selling to a business. No, <laughs> it's the same thing. Here, here's marketing. I don't care who you're marketing to. You want me to tell you how you, how you construct a, a marketing program? Something big is happening. It's bad. We don't know it. Ooh, it's bad. It's, or it's good. Hey, a good thing's happening. Some, something new. A big thing is happening. You don't know what to do about it. We're the solution who can help you. It's that simple. Okay? Any marketing program needs to have, if you do that structure, 90% of the time you're covered. Okay? Why should people come to you? Oh, well, the real estate market in Boca, we're the only ones who really, you know, with all kinds of things. Oh, you don't know, you know if you're getting a good deal? We're the ones who can help you. That's how you're going to drive people to come to you as a part of your community. Okay? So I only sell to other people. Doing some work for one of our clients um, whose main target were HR professionals in Fortune 500 companies. Right? Huge issue in HR, but for the first time ever, there's five generations in the workforce. Each of us want to be managed differently. Right? You, you youngsters, you want to show up in flip-flops at 10 a.m., but you don't mind working until 2 in the morning. Right? Those of us who are a little bit older with families, now we've got to drop the kids off at school first, and then I've got to be home by 4.30 because all hell breaks loose at that point. <laughs> right? Five generations, all managed differently. The older generation, oh man, I'd really love to retire, but can't afford to. So I'm just going to keep working until like, they carry me out of here. Right? It's a huge issue. They have conferences about this. So there's this group called Key Group Consulting that does HR consulting that started a group on LinkedIn about it that has over 8,000 members. Now, are they pitching to those 8,000 people? No. They're managing that group. They're helping the conversation. They're curating that content. Right? When one of these people says, we really need to get some HR consultants in here, who do you think is in the consideration set? If they're going to bring four groups in, four, four companies to help them, who do you think one of those four companies has a good chance of being? These people. Change nothing in your business. Don't change your close rate. Don't change you know, anything. You know that whole funnel thing, right? Don't change anything. If you increase the size of the top and you change nothing, guess what you've done? You've increased the size of the bottom. It's math. And that's what they're doing. They're increasing the size of the top. So when someone decides, I need an HR professional. I need an interactive digital social agency. I need a Boca Realtor. I need a, I don't know what anyone else, what's going to be someone else's business. I'm going to pick on them all day. What, what do you do? Um, for, uh, student leadership training for universities. When people make that decision that they want that, you, you, you're, you're in the consideration set. <clears throat> And this is my favorite, Koji Barbecue. They were the first kind of food truck with this whole food truck craze. They're the ones that actually kicked it off. Okay, big long story, but basically two brothers-in-law, one was Mexican, one was Korean. Family dinner, put some Korean food on a taco. Uh, tasted great, they bought a truck. <laughs> the whole story, you can read the article, I mean, I'm not, I'm not exaggerating. Okay, they bought a truck uh, uh, and have like 100,000 fans in, in LA and they've expanded to other cities. They, they're the ones that literally kicked off this food, this food truck craze. Okay? And if they can do it, well, they don't even have a location. <laughs> All right. Quick cautionary tale. And this is a little bit old. But as you can see, I love my iced coffee. I have a choice between hot and cold coffee. I'll take the cold one. Right? It doesn't mean I don't drink the hot one, but I prefer the cold one. So I'm tootling along on the internet. It's one of the beauties of being in my role is I could be on any site at any time. So what are you on that for? I'm like, oh, look at the navigation. I can say, you know, because that's, that's what I do for a living. So I'm tootling along and I see this ad. Visually, this ad is great. Within that half a second that people talk about, it's captured my interest and I understand what the ad is about. It's a, it's a very well done ad by a brand that I recognize with a cute little message. You know, click here, touch me, see if we click my banner ad on a website. So what did I do? Product I like, brand I recognize, and a visually appealing ad. I clicked, and I came here to the nice little microsite. 
And it was cute, a little bit of flash, the thing spun around, you know, little cute messages. This is cool. And 99 cents, they're just launching this product for, for the cost of what this cost me. I could probably get like 12 or 13 of those. <laughs> oh my God, and they're social. <gasps> this is a little while ago. This goes back a couple of years now. This is so cool. A product I love, a brand I recognize, visually appealing and social, something that I'm passionate about. Awesome. So I clicked and I came to their fan page that had 56 fans. Now, talk about brand promise. There's different levels of brand promise going on in, in your relationship with a customer. Did they fulfill the brand promise that they presented to me on this journey that I went through with them? this customer experience journey? No. I was actually pissed. I'm like, how dare you bring me to a fan page for a brand like this that has 56 fans? They have like 14,000 locations across North America. Forget about like Japan where every corner has like three of these. Okay, just North America, 14,000 locations. Are you telling me that they couldn't get the franchisees of those 14,000 locations, it's probably 5,000 franchisees? Are you telling me that they couldn't get each franchisee to like this page before they invited me over? Are you telling me they couldn't run a program before they invited me over where they, start, they did a soft launch for this product? Yeah. Think, <laughs> think of what it costs to launch iced coffee in just 14,000 locations across North America. Okay? You have to source the beans because it has to be consistent. If I buy it here or I buy it in Schenectady or I buy it in Peoria, it has to be the same product. That's why Starbucks, wherever you go in the world, it's the same product. Okay? The, 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 just the signage. One sign for each of those locations. I mean, these things cost real money. The, the equipment, because doing iced coffee is not the same as doing regular coffee, right? Because it has to be double brewed, because when you put ice in it, 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 it waters it down. Training. I mean, think, not casting aspersions, but think of who you have working at 7-Eleven. Uh, you have to train them on this, right? Millions of dollars just to launch this one product. Okay? And so I presented in front of a national advertising um, organization, a lot of advertising agencies in there, about 300 advertising agencies and one person from the client side. Um, and I said, I blame you guys. Why? Because this was a checkbox for an advertising agency. Go, make sure we have a Facebook page. Okay? This is ridiculous. I mean, there were at the time, more than 56 locations within a couple of miles of my office. Okay, you tell me they couldn't get those people to, 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 to like the page before they invited me over? So, you know, if you're going to do this, you're going to set up a brand promise with social, got to follow through. All right. Let's talk about platforms. Uh, what time did we start? 9.30 an hour? Do you all want to take a five minute break? Okay, five minutes. Uh, I have 10.35. We're going to start at 10.40. We kind of break them down into a couple of different um, categories, a little bit different than I think other organizations or agencies out there. We talk about main platforms, what we call supporting platforms, what we call other platforms, and then there's these location based that were a really big thing for a year, a year ago, that are just kind of there now. So the main platforms used to be these three, Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn. Google Plus has a place though. And how many of y'all are, are pinning? Who's on Pinterest? Come on, put your hand up. You're lying. There's more than that. You okay? So Pinterest, I don't know if you know about it, has become this massive, quickly growing platform that people are spending more time on and is driving more traffic than any site out there right now. Oh, people are driving tremendous amounts of business and traffic to their websites using it. It's a whole discussion. We'll talk about it a little bit later, but it's, it's so new and has grown so quickly and has such potential legal issues <laughs> that, you know, it's like, you know, that's one of those jump on the bandwagon now while it's hot because it may be gone six months from now. Okay? <laughs> So, you know, we focus, everyone focuses very much on these, where we actually start with our clients when we're creating programs, ongoing programs, and where everyone should be starting is here. 
in the supporting, I'll do it over here for people on the other side, supporting. The user generated content sites such as, Tumblr. I'm sorry? Tumblr. Tumblr. Wikipedia. Wikipedia. You gotta, just kinda be, gotta be careful a little bit with Wikipedia. YouTube, may have heard of it? Yep. Right? User generated content, places where you as a user can generate the content and put the content on. Flickr, I mean, sites like that. That's where you kind of want to start. With a blog, there's a definite specific reason for, still, for doing a blog. Twitter kind of straddles the main and the supporting, depending on how it's used. And then there's all the social bookmarking sites um, like um, Delicious and. When? I'm sorry? Dig. Dig, sites like that. Okay? Where no one ever looks are what do we call the other sites? Right? Who here likes to travel? You know, that was a question. Everyone likes to travel? Are you all on Wayne? Who here has a travel related business? Anyone? We're in Florida? Really? A Florida audience and no one does travel? That's a first. Wayne stands for where are you now? It is a travel focused social media platform that only has, oh, I don't know, 20 million members. Now, does that, how does it compare to you know, Facebook's 845 million? Well, it doesn't if you look at it just like that. But these are people who like to travel, who are coming to a location, who are looking for hotels and restaurants and things to do when they're traveling. And nobody knows about them. They're ignoring them. It's in these others, these other platforms, which is where the nuggets are. The places where you can go that your competitors aren't, where people have self-selected themselves. Okay. In fact, there are, this is an old list that I'm sure has many, many more. There are literally thousands of smaller social platforms. I don't care the demographic, the psychographic, the interest of your target customer. There's a platform specifically for them. This is where everyone overlooks. I'll tell you a little story. I was doing some work for a uh, luxury cruise line. And uh, there's a couple of sites focused on really rich people, right? Called one of them up, that they're actually based here in Florida, and I said, hey, I'm working for a luxury cruise line, they're launching a new ship, you know, what can, you know, target demographic is right on, you know, what can we do, and what they basically said is, okay, so what we can do is we will create a destination on the site for you, we will actually drive people to that destination, we will make your destination friends with your destination on the site, Right, so we will do that for you, and we will actually host an event for you where we guarantee that 50 of these people, now these cruises are like 15 grand a person a pop, right? I mean, these are luxury cruises. We'll guarantee that 50 people that would be your target demographic will be at that event. You have to pay for the event, but we guarantee that th that they'll be there. And I'm like, oh my God, what's this going to cost? And he says, well, you know, we would expect a $10,000 ad spend over three months. And I'm like, wow, that's not bad. $30,000 for all of that. He's like, oh no, I'm sorry. $10,000 over three months. They were going to do that for $3,000 a month of ad buys. These smaller platforms are hungry for money. They're hungry for real advertisers to be on their site to say to other advertisers, hey, look who's advertising. Okay? I'm telling you, they're out there. These are the gems. And nobody's focusing on these because everyone's focused on what? Facebook. Okay? I don't do we don't do a lot of Facebook to be honest with you, with our clients. We do some. But that's not really where we spend a lot of our time. Don't forget about these. All right. Here's a little exercise called, I call who are you and what do you do? How many of you all are entrepreneurs? So how many of you how come everyone's hand isn't up? Because everyone's an entrepreneur. If you're not an entrepreneur of your own career, guess what's gonna happen? Nothing. So who among you entrepreneurs have business plans? That's it? Really? All right. You should be able to answer at any time, any moment, these questions. What does your business or industry do? How are you unique? 
What's so special about your brand? I mean, you go into a shopping center these days and you have two dry cleaners in there, right? How do they coexist? Well, one's focusing on, you know, the, you know, cost effective solution and one is kind of the more, you know, high touch, more expensive, you know, solution. And at the back, they both, all the clothes go into the same van and go to the same processing center. Okay? But it's based on the brand. How is your brand unique? What are your business goals? What's your current strategy? Is it different than last year's? Is it the same? What are your current marketing programs and campaigns? Who are your customers? Do you truly understand who your customers are? If almost every client that we work with thinks they know who their customer is and they're for the most part wrong. Who are your competitors? I mean, there's many more questions. What are you doing? Now, if I were to come to any one of you and say, I want to do a marketing program for you and we're going to do you know, some ad buys and we're going to do some direct mail, you know, we're, we'll have this conversation. Right? You're going to force me to have this conversation with you so that I understand all of this. For some reason, again, when it comes to this social stuff, nobody focuses on this stuff. And that is such a mistake. The social stuff is just another marketing program where you have to answer all these questions and understand these questions. Otherwise, you're kind of doing that you know, non-targeted stuff. Right? Does that make sense? Question? With the social marketing, do you recommend that you're always driving people back to your it's Facebook advertising back to your Facebook page or to your actual website or landing page for that OK. Did everyone hear the question? Yes. yes. You all here in the back? No. With uh, social advertising or, or Facebook advertising, are you always driving people back to your Facebook page or to your website or some other page? There's a lot of debate about this. A couple of things to think about. One, um, ads on Facebook at least that drive people to a Facebook page have a much higher click-through rate than ads on Facebook that drive people off-site. Okay. So they're, they're probably more effective as an ad from a click-through perspective. Um, driving people to your Facebook page can, in some instance, instances, be fairly meaningless. What are you giving them when they go there? Are they ever going to come back? And what don't you own? When people like your Facebook page, what don't you own? Information. Their information. You don't own that relationship. Guess who does? Facebook. So LinkedIn a couple of years ago, people had built these tremendous groups on LinkedIn. 10, 20, 30,000 people. And LinkedIn one day sent out a message to all of them, hey, if your group has more than 5,000 people, you can no longer message them. What? I built my whole business around this group. I can't message these people? No. Why? They didn't own it. LinkedIn did. You have to understand this going in, that you can build a tremendous following on these platforms and they can just take it away from you. I've had major brands that have had their Facebook pages deleted by Facebook. And do you know what Facebook does not have? Customer service. <laughs> I'm, I'm not joking. There is no one in Facebook on customer service unless you have an account rep. And to get an account rep, guess how much you have to spend approximately each month in advertising? Guess. Million dollars. How much? Million dollars. Close. $50,000 a month it's gone up to now. Might be a little bit less, might be a little bit more. A month, $600,000 a year. Let's call it a half a mil for them to even look at you. I used to have a VIP email that I could help clients out with things, changing the names on their pages and stuff. Last time I tried to use it for a hotel here in Fort Lauderdale that's a client, because um, they, they, they the classification of their hotel had changed, they need to change the name of their Facebook page. I sent to the same email I've been using, and I got an email back saying, this email is no longer valid. We're no longer accepting requests via this email. Please contact the person who originally gave it to you to get done what it is you're asking for. What? I, I don't know who that was. It was like three years ago. OK? Answer your question? I, I don't know. What are you trying to do? Right, it all goes back to that. You don't own it. My view is, for the most part, fa your Facebook page should be a conduit to you driving them to your website to get their email address. You still want their email address. 
Doesn't mean you can't talk to them on Facebook. Doesn't mean you can't talk to them on Twitter. You want to give them a reason to give you their email address. All right. Before we get really started, a social media program isn't free, e free, easy, or immediate. The reason I have those three words in that sentence is because I got a, an email from a client that we were pitching all this social stuff to a couple of years ago who said, OK, I love what you're saying, but if we're going to do a social program, I want it to be free, easy, and immediate. And I responded back, you can have one of the three. You can't have two or three out of those. You can have it be free, but it's not going to be easy, and it's not going to be an immediate result. You can have it be easy, but it's going to cost you money, and you might not get an immediate result. You can have it immediate, but it's not going to be free, and it's not going to be easy. Can't have all three. Okay? These, these things are hard work, because it's a lot of work. Easy to do, and everyone thinks social media is free. Yeah, so when it's midnight, and you've been working for six hours on this one thing, and you have like four other things that you need to get done before the next day, because you've set up a brand promise that every Tuesday you're going to have this article and video out, and you have to keep your brand promise. Yeah, easy. All right, whoops. It's hard to measure, hard to maintain, and it won't give you an immediate return. You're really building a social media program for next year, right? I know people who are in your industry who five years ago started doing the social stuff, and their business has doubled every year for the last five years in this economy here in South Florida, okay? Because they set this great groundwork. They spend, each of them, eight hours a day on it. And, and I'm not exaggerating. That's what it takes. All right? So before you get started, how many of you here learn how to develop a social media program for your business? None of you are here to develop a social media program? For no, are, are here to learn how. Who's here to learn how? All right, so that says to me that you have running at 100%. Your website is 100% optimized to drive people to an effect that you're looking for, to a call to action. Every single page has it. And everyone who comes to your site, it's optimized to the highest level that you can optimize it, right? <laughs> no? All right, well, then your web analytics, you not only have it installed and it's generating re those reports. Those reports are actually giving you actionable insights that you are acting upon, right? No? OK, you have a great email program where you're constantly generating traffic that's segmented down to the level of segmentation that you need to actually drive, drive your business. No. What the hell are you doing here? <laughs> what we have found is the level that organizations are doing these things is above the level that they will be doing their social programs. Get your house in order before you start inviting people over to the party. <laughs> it's that simple. Why have a great social program that you're going to drive people to your website that's a page that says coming soon? <laughs> you're laughing because you all know that you've seen this. Have people give you their email address and then you do nothing with it. Now, I get it. I have a business. I know how hard this is to do. I know how hard it is, you know. We all supposedly have lives and families and <laughs> used to have interests. <laughs> it's, it's 11 o'clock at night. You're tired. You haven't eaten, right? It's like you didn't get to exercise, obviously, that day, <laughs> right? You ate crap. Right? You feel like you just want to, and it's like you got four things that, that are like hour long things that you need to, I get it. I get it. But you got to focus on these things. You got to get these things up and running so that when you start implementing these programs, these are already running programs that you don't have to focus on because they're already running. I mean, does that make sense? I'm telling you. If you don't have these things, forget about all this social stuff. Fix this. This will drive your business. Okay? Social is, you know, that icing on top or the gravy in the bowl, whatever you want, whatever the metaphor is that you want to use. That's what social is. It's not a replacement for these things. These are the things that are going to truly drive your business. What social does is kind of brings it all together. I told you social wasn't fun. Yeah. Customer relationship management. All right. First thing that you all are doing already, hopefully, is listening, right? 
What are you listening to? Who wants to give me an example? People are nodding their heads. Go back to you guys. You guys are like, what are you listening to? No, I know you're listening to me. Thank you. All right. Are you listening to see if there's conversations about you online? Bet you there are. I did a presentation to an organization that had all these tiny little companies. And they're like, oh no, no, there's nothing going on. And I went at the day before, they gave me the list, and I went and I showed every single one of them in the audience how someone was saying something about them online. And one of them was this horrible comments about how dirty the place was and disgusting and all this. And the, the woman looked up and goes, we closed that place two years ago and moved. We have a brand new facility. But that was what people were seeing. And guess what else was on there? Ads from their main competitors at the bottom of the page, literally referring to that, <laughs> saying, don't go there, come to us. And they didn't know. Okay. So what do you need to do? You need to listen. You need to your brand, your industry, topics. You need to set up alerts. These things are easy and free. Google Alerts. You can go and type in. I have Google Alerts for Murray Eisenwasser, for Murray IZ, for Biztegra, for all of our different types of brands that we can have. And it sends me a message every time someone posts something. Right? You need to set up what we call a listening station. What is that? It starts with Google Alerts. So we have a search term of Biztegra. Everything that goes there, once a day, send me an alert. Um, give me only the best results. And then delivering it to John and our organization. All right? You can, this is free. Google gives this to you. Free tool. You can have it go into Google Reader, which is another free tool. We follow all these blogs and our own stuff, what people are saying about us, what people are saying about friends, clients, competitors. And it comes into this form, right? And you can just go through and scan through all this information. And how many of you have like one of these? You have an iPad? And then what you can do is they have tools that make it even more fun. So every morning and every night, I use what's called Flipboard, which organizes this and my, our Twitter stream and our Facebook and everything else. And so I can go into um, that and it presents it like this. And I can look at all of the, you can't because it's Wi-Fi and it's not connected, but page after page, look at the articles I want. Okay. There are tools out there to help you do this. So that's the first thing you all need to do is set up a listening station. See what, who's talking about you, see what they're saying. You can also go to Twitter and you can type things in. You know, if we go and type in Biztegra, um, we were asked a question, talking about our Atlanta social media workshop, talking about uh, we co-hosted a conference on social media in the pharmaceutical industry. You know, so all the things that people were saying about us or we were saying about ourselves just on Twitter. Uh, specifically with Twitter, I've been reading that everything pertaining to Twitter, their statistics are so blown out of proportion because the percentage of activity is created by a small group of, uh, you know, Ashton Kutcher telling everybody what he's doing next. I would love Ashton Kutcher to tweet about Biztegra. Twitter, considering most small businesses, how much activity would really be going on that it becomes almost impulsive? That so let, let me tell you, so let, so let me answer that with a little story. Okay. So I go to Orlando, we have clients up there. Um, I love my sushi, I love the raw fish. Um, I was meeting with a client downtown and so I went on to Twitter and I just typed in Orlando Sushi and this thing came up, a, a response back uh, from the search, search result which was uh, a sushi place called Orlando Ichiban, right? Which when I looked at the address was two doors down from the client I was meeting at and I was meeting this client at like, you know, 4.30 so that he would hopefully say, hey, let's go grab some, something for dinner and then I could, you know, buy him dinner and expense it out. And so we did that, and he's like, uh, let's go grab some dinner. I'm like, OK, where do you want to go? He goes, it's a great sushi place, two doors down. I'm like, awesome. Went there, had a great time, great sushi. Got home to the hotel that night, went on Twitter, and I tweeted to them, to, to Orlando Ichiban. And I said, hey, I was in your restaurant with a client tonight, had a great time. I got an immediate response back 
saying, wish you would have told us you were here. We love to meet our Twitter friends. Next time you're coming, let me know. I'll shoot you a 10% off coupon. How much brand loyalty did that one tweet engender? Because they were listening and responded. Right? Been back to Orlando a whole bunch of times. I've gone there at least five more times. If I'm near downtown Orlando and I'm going to go out for dinner, chances are I'm going to look for sushi and guess where I'm going to go? Because they were listening. Question. Yep. Have you ever bothered with the 10%? Never. Never asked for it. Not once. And that's usually actually the point that I then bring up. Absolutely. Never even asked for the coupon. It wasn't about the coupon. And I will continue to go there until they do not fulfill their brand promise. And I don't get good service, or I don't get good food, or something else happens. One tweet, because they were listening. Right? What's one new client worth to you? I know one new client's worth a lot to us. And if that's what it takes, then I'm going to put those six hours in a day to maybe find those couple of new clients a year. That's all that we need. Right? Does that answer your question? I, I understand what you're saying. One extreme because I could have said, well, why didn't you go after them? But think LinkedIn, Facebook, and you could just keep on naming 50 you different things. You could. You got to pick your platforms, yeah. without a doubt, because there is only a certain amount of time in the day, from what I'm told, without a doubt. Okay? So, and there's a lot more things out there for you to choose nowadays, without a doubt. All right? There's also tools out there. This is a tweet deck where you can follow different accounts, not only on Twitter, but on um, other platforms. You can follow concepts. There's a couple of authors that I like. So there's a community that's built up around these authors. And so we kind of have conversations about them. Sometimes they even join in if they're on Twitter. right? So I follow those, those concepts. But we follow things from a business perspective also. Right? First thing you need to do is set up a listening station. Are people talking about you or your competitors or, you know, we have a, a, a real estate client actually that we used to have that every Sunday night they were a provider to the real estate industry. Okay, so they weren't realtors. But every Sunday night there's a realtors chat. Did you know that in, here in South Florida? South Florida realtors chat Sunday nights on Twitter? No. You should be joining in the conversation. And those are the types of things that you find out by setting up a listening station. All right. So here's, sta here's state of the art listening station. going to go out and build something like that? Probably not. <laughs> but that's, that's what's going on out there. That's the level of listening, even with our clients that don't have big budgets. They have, you know, there's someone watching nowadays, watching what's going on on an almost ongoing basis. Right? I mean, at the break, I went right to my phone and I checked to see what the chatter was. So. So it's either your competitors aren't doing this and you have an opportunity, or your competitors are doing this and you're behind. It's one of those two. So either way, it's something you all should be doing for your businesses. You just have to be. All right. All right. Let's talk about video, which is one of my things. Love the video. Okay? Here. I want to do something. Here we go.
There's my camera. All right. Got the video going. We're going to do a wave. All right, we're going to start here, and we're going to go around the room. I want to, and I want a good wave. I'm going to make you do it until I like it. All right? And we're going to end over here. All right? And I want the whole woo thing, too. All right? Are you ready? Hold on a second. Let me get this going. Go. <laughs> that was awesome. Let's go the other way now. <laughs> Awesome. 20 seconds. That was 20 seconds. It's something I carry in my pocket all the time. Okay? We're going to come back to this. <laughs> all right, video. How many of y'all watch video on, online? How many of y'all watch video on your phone or your iPad or Android device? Yeah. So the number of um, US adults who watched video in the previous 30 days at, I think it was like the end of December, compared to the same question asked in April of last year, like sex toppled. It went from like 30% to 140% or something like that, who watch video on a mobile device. Video has just become this thing. And if you all have kids who are like the you know, 9 to 15 age, and if you give them a new product or a toy or something, do they look at the instructions? What do they do? They go on YouTube and figure it out. They show someone else doing it. I do that all the time. I don't look at instructions. We don't need those stinking instructions. I have YouTube. Right? It has become this thing. So there's all kinds of statistics about video. Okay? The one that I like that isn't up here is this one from Forrester Research. Are you all familiar with Forrester Research? No? They're one of the big you know, marketing and technology research firms. Videos are 53 times more likely than text pages to appear on the first page of search results. Now 53%, 53 times. Okay. A well-run social program is an incredible, someone mentioned SEO back here, you two guys? Yeah. An incredible search engine optimization program. If you do content generation from yourself or your customers and do it well and stop there, you are ahead of your competition, I guarantee it. All right, a couple of examples. Because everyone hates to do video, right? We don't think we look good, video ads. I'm on video right now because it added the 20 or 30 pounds. Okay? Actually, before I, just so you know, before I became this fat tub of goo that I am, I used to own two gyms. So this is what, you know, work and family does to you. So don't work and don't have a, never mind. <laughs> All right, anyone familiar with uh, Chris Brogan? He's like the top social media person out there. So I, I know Chris, you know, that's my little, you know, I know him, he knows who I am. So I sent him a, a little thing, he said, hey Chris, you know, you use video a lot. He's actually started to almost exclusively focus on video. Helping companies do great video, social, pro social video programs. Okay? And I said, send me a, can you send me a little clip of using video? And so he did. Hey, it's Chris Brogan. Murray asked me to talk to you about the importance of video and what video has done for me in my blogging. Um, at chrisbrogan.com, I didn't really start tuning down to video blogging until I don't remember when, maybe uh, 2008, 2009, something like that. But I do it quite often now. I do it maybe at least once a week. And the reason I do is so that I can have this intimate connection with you. So the most important thing it does is it allows me to connect directly to you without any kind of third party, without any federating, without you having to read. See the difference between looking into somebody's eyes versus just reading the text? It matters. And it's so easy to do. It took me 37 seconds to push record and everything like that, and I'm going to push this in a mail to Murray, and you'll get a chance to watch it. That easy. Uh, swing by chrisbrogan.com if you want to continue talking to me, but I think you're in good hand. So Mark Horvath runs a blog. Um, he's hardly normal on 
um, Twitter, and he runs a blog. He used to be homeless and has you know come back from that, and his blog is all about helping people who don't have a voice get a voice. Right, so uh, he and I were presenting at a conference, so I sought him an email saying, hey, could you do a little video, do a lot of video, do you think you could do a little video for me about doing video? Right, and so I didn't even know who he was, he didn't know me, aside from the fact that we were both presenting at the same conference kind of the next day. And so he did this. Hi, I'm Mark Horvath, most people know me as Hardly Normal on Twitter, I run a video blog, well, most people think it's a video blog, but it's really a conversation called InvisiblePeople.tv. Why a video blog? Well, behind the scene first, I hate to type. But uh, the reality is, it's emotion. So much uh, human emotion is just lost in, in written work. Uh, the other reason is authenticity. I can write that this person is on an exit ramp, that they look like this, or they're doing this, but, you know, gosh, maybe they're not. But uh, when you see that video, it's the real deal. Um, my biggest tips, I think, would be to not take yourself too seriously uh, and have fun. Uh, I'm an old school broadcaster. I come uh, from producing television shows, award winning television producer uh, is my background. And when I first started doing video, I was pulling out my hair trying to be perfect. And you can't be perfect. And what I've learned is, you know, little imperfections make you human, and that's what people attach to, that's what they relate to. Uh, when I first, honest, when I first tried to make hair was right, and sound was right, and all the video background and everything looked good, and yeah, make sure the best you can the stuff looks good. But, you know, here I am, I'm running out the door, I'm late, I'm catching a plane, coming to you guys. Uh, I just got out of the shower, I would not ever have done a video, but this is my only opportunity. And, you know, you've got to make the best of it, make it fun and make it human and make it real. So, seriously, authenticity has replaced production value. And just go do it. Don't tweak on your hair and your location and the sound. Uh, the most watched video of my generation uh, was Rodney King. And Rodney King was shot on VHS tape. It had a $10,000 budget because that's what Fox News paid for that VHS tape. But literally, it was really horrible quality, but that video played all over around the world. Most, most watched video of our time. So remember, be yourself, have fun, and let's change the world. Yeah, so he actually shot that video. Again, he was flying from California to Florida for this conference. The taxi was waiting for him downstairs, and he shot that video for me. Okay, so, I mean, great, great guy. Um, Mark Horvath, H-O-R-V-A-T-H. Um, there's, there's this uh, a blog called Simple Vlogging Tips by, Tips by this woman named uh, Jen D. Same thing, she was presenting at a conference. I'm like, hey, can you think I can get a video from you about doing video? You do video, I talk about it a lot. So she sent me this. I'm Jen D. In 2008, when I saw people adding video to their blog post, I knew that I wanted to do it too. So I grabbed my camera, made a video about French braiding my hair, and that's how I started my vlogging career. My number one tip for others that want to get into online video is to just do it. Don't wait until you have the perfect equipment, the perfect time, the perfect hairdo. Just vlog it. Since I am constantly striving to make my videos better, I've taken the information that I've learned and am learning and posted it at simplebloggingtips.com. So you notice what they've each done in this little video that I, they've plugged themselves. Did you even notice? Right? I mean, you did, but it's done in such a natural way, right? So the last one here is again from IWearYourShirt.com. Jason Sadler over there on the left has built this great company. Like I said, he's, it's been around four years. We've done this four years in a row. So we're one of only two of his advertisers that have bought a day. So you buy a day, they wear your shirt that day, and they do a little simple video. The one that I showed at the beginning, that was the video that he did for us this year. Um, and then they do an hour-long show, and because they're in Jacksonville, I usually go up and I take part. Um, so this is what he says about it. Hello, world. My name is Jason Sapper from MyWearYourShirt.com. This is a video uh, about video tips. And my video tip is to just keep doing video. Practice makes perfect. Uh, you get more comfortable on video. You don't have to have a big fancy camera. This is shot on my site. But just get your footage out there. Get your thoughts out there. Um, whatever it is that you're doing, 
use the video because Forrester Research a couple years ago said that content gets consumed 50% more often when there's a video attached. So that's good to, to up your chances of people reading your content. And if you were forced to watch this video, um, I hope you enjoyed it. If you weren't forced to watch it, then thanks. I really appreciate you watching this video. It's not a video. It's a video. <laughs> Jason's a special guy. He, he really is. I, you know, he and I have a really good relationship. So why am I taking all this time about this? Okay, why, why focus on video to start with? Anyone have any thoughts? Why am I focus? There, there's more. What's that? It's easier to get started. Captures your attention. It's easier to get started. You want to be personal. Be personal. What's that? Relationships. I mean, what it, let's talk about. Uh, I'm sorry? Revenue. <laughs> Revenue. I love it. <laughs> um, oh, don't break. Oh, we're we not there. I oh, know they said it earlier. You're right. Absolutely. We'll talk about that. Okay. So, what were the things that they all kind of said? They all had. They don't know each other. They didn't know I was doing this. What did they all say? Just do it, just get started, don't worry, it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, it, be authentic, be yourself. You can't fake it anymore. What's that? Keep it simple. Keep it simple. They all said the same things. Right? Okay. So why are we focusing on this? Okay. Go big, go viral. Right? And have you seen any of these videos? That one up on the upper left was the first viral hit on YouTube, Evolution of Dance. Any of y'all seen it? You should look at it. It's really funny. It has like 150 million views or something like that, or the time was 125 million. Um, Lady Gaga and Charlie bit my finger again for a time were vying for the top video, and literally there were these flame wars going between fans of the videos, like flaming each other on YouTube. It was like crazy. And of course, Lady Gaga won, who had something like the last figure I saw, I think, was two billion video views on YouTube. B -b billion video views. Um, anyone seen those um, Evian Roller Baby yeah. videos? They have different versions of different versions, right? Each one gets like 10 million views, right? Um, Blend Tech Blender, will it blend? Have you seen that? Blend Tech Blender. Um, any of y'all eaten at a Jamba Juice or you know one of those juicing places? They owned 100% of the professional blending market. So you go into a bar or one of those places, it's a Blendtec blender. And they realized that to grow, they needed to sell these blenders to us. These blenders are like $437, right? If you want to get me a present, because I did such a great job in this, let's get everyone together, because I would love one. I have like the next level down. It was only like $200, and my wife got me to do juicing. Okay, I want one of these. So this is the guy, that, and he, what he did was, he, he's the founder and CMO, and these blenders are so good, they can literally blend anything. Bowling balls, brooms, bricks, and what really, remember when these iPhone things first came out, like you couldn't find one? He took his iPhone and blended it. Will it blend? And turned it into a fine powder that got like 10 million views. And this is back before we all had broadband, you know, three years ago. It's amazing how fast things go. And then just kept doing these videos. And in the first year, quintupled their business. I'm not saying going up by 50%. Quintupled their business. Their business went up revenue year over year by five times. OK? Pretty cool stuff, huh? Well, guess what? It's not going to happen for you, and it's not going to happen for you, or you, or you, or you, or me, or any of my clients. And if anyone tells you that they can do this, because I know there are people out there who say they can do this, they can create a viral video, they're lying to you. Because if they could do this, how much do you think a viral video is worth to General Motors or Pepsi? Ten million a pop? I could, uh, if I could get a video to get, and I could guarantee them, uh, time after time, 10, 50, 100 million views, I could charge them ten million dollars for that. They're lying to you. This ain't gonna happen. Okay? You're not gonna hit this home run. Hey, you never know. People win lotteries. Could happen. If this is what you're trying to do, you're wasting your time. Okay? 
Let, let's think about this, as you said. YouTube is the second largest search engine, meaning more people go to YouTube to search for things than any other site than what? What we affectionately at BizTagra call the Goog. It's the third most visited site. Now these numbers kind of shift a little bit. For a little while, Twitter was the second most visited, second largest search engine. For a little while, they became the second most visited. And then like Facebook, you know, so back and forth. It kind of goes back and forth. But it's huge, okay? So what does that mean for video? Well, I have lots of examples of this. So I'm only going to show, I think, one just based on time. And we only have an hour left, and I have 175 slides left. Um, what one little video can do. We, we, we work with the publisher, and so we do these videos um, of author speaking. Now, the publisher that we work with is a, an STM publisher, science, technical, and medical publisher. Their books for their, the people that buy them are riveting. They're not necessarily books that people out in the general population will buy unless you are an astronuclear nanophysicist because that's who they would write these books for. So this guy's one of their authors, Greg Schultz, wrote a book on cloud and virtual data storage networking, um, created this video, and it's really him talking for a couple of minutes about the video, right? So let's take a look at what the results were by us posting this one little video. All right, before posting it, our client had one listing in the front page of the Google search results when we searched for the term virtual cloud storage book, which you wouldn't think would be, but is a very highly competitive term. If you look up here, if you can see through the red line that I've crossed it out with, 20, over 20 million results when you search for that. That's competitive. You notice who's above them? Little company you may have heard of called Amazon, right? After an hour of posting this video, 60 minutes, and we've done things for clients and as experiments where within six minutes we've seen results. After an hour, they now have five postings on the first page of the search results. Now, how important is that first page of the search results? There is no second page or third page of search results anymore. There used to kind of be, but now with the instant search that Google does, if you don't like what you see, what do you do? You don't go to the second page, you hit backspace and you type something else in. It's all on that first page. Within an hour, five out of the 10 or 11, depending on how Google does it, it'll be 10 or 11 results. It's pretty impressive, huh? One video. After five hours, we had six. The top three were video links, which are 53 or 50 times more likely to be clicked on than a regular text link. And three others. So we have the top four and two others after five hours. If we clicked on, if you go back here and click on more videos, so you go to the videos for it, we had the top five listings for that one video. If you type in virtual cloud storage book and click on video. This is serious results. Okay, that's one video. After, after 24 hours, we pretty much own the front page of search. Question? Yes, um, to get those results that you got, did, did that person like, just work with Google or did it just kind of come about just naturally? Well, we, we did it. We, oh, we posted it. We'll talk about it in a second. Make sure I answer your question, okay? In the next couple of slides. Let's, yes? How long are those going to stay up there? So I recently spoke, did a pr I have a much longer version of this section all about video as a presentation. And I just did it to Social Media Club of Jacksonville. And I do this before every time I do that presentation is I post a video to show real results relating to the people that I'm posting about. And I did this little video 
saying, hey, really excited to be going up to Jacksonville. You can search for it through Social Media Club Jacksonville. You'll find the video. I'm really excited to be going up to Jacksonville, talking to Social Media Club, blah, blah, blah. Looking forward to seeing you there. That was it. Right? Did two different versions, put it up. I had videos from two years ago that were up when I was there speaking the last time. So when I did a search, Social Media Club Jacksonville video, videos from two years ago were still showing up on the front page of the search results. It's there forever. Now, there will be a degradation over time, right? But I, I, I was competing basically with this new video I did with myself from two years ago. They're there for a long time. Any other questions? I'm, I'm sorry. You're getting those results because you're typing exactly the name of the business or the name of the oh. the, the question is, am I getting the results because I'm typing exactly the, the, the search term? No. I'm getting those results, results because I, which is kind of what your question was also, I think. I'm titling and describing and tagging it appropriately for my target search terms. How many of you all know for your business what your main keywords are that you're developing content for online? Every single one of you should know that, should be able to rattle that off. That should be literally a piece of printed paper next to your monitor so that when you're creating any kind of content, you're including those keywords because it's all about Google. What's that? So basically, before you create your website, you should do the research, get all of those keywords, then create your content to put on the website. I'm trying to find a dollar bill giver or something, because yeah, without a doubt. Instead of creating a website and then trying to get Create a website. Create an email. Create a flyer. Create post content to, to, to your blog. Put something out on Facebook. You should understand all that. Absolutely. You need to understand what traffic you're trying to drive. What are the people who are looking for you? What are they searching for? And now, you're creating a, who, who, who here has ever created a press release? Who's written a press release? Put your hands up, please. I want to see. So when you create a press release, when you create a press release, what's the, tell me the order that you use to create that press release. What are the steps that you go through? Oh, gosh. Um, what's the first thing that you do? Um, I, don't, I don't remember what I did. I was, it, it was really just a, just kind of like, here, here we are, this is what we're doing. Yeah. Um, what was the first step? Okay. You know the first step of creating a press release? Figure out what keywords you're going to want to use in the press release. And you write the press release around the keywords. That, that's, that's what it, it's all about the keywords. It's all about search. I think I have the example in here after this. I might have taken it just for time of using a video with an online press release and truly dominating search. All right. So after 24 hours, and after 24 hours, we own the first seven video positions under videos in Google. That's one video. Now imagine if you do two videos a week, driving to your keywords. Your competitors are still not doing this. They're starting to. Okay? You could dominate search. Do a great video program, create yourself a simple blog on your website, put them there, do some of the other things we're going to talk about in a second. And stop there. I'm happy. You don't have to do the full-blown social program. You have my permission to stop. But you have to do this, and you have to do it ongoing, and you have to do it consistently. Okay? Lots of different sites aside from YouTube to post. And instead of posting to multiple times, and Dakesha just left, she knows this. What you do is use a site like OneLoad or PixelPipe. And here's an example of something that changes in social media. OneLoad used to be called TubeMogul. TubeMogul has now become an advertising platform. And OneLoad, which was their engine that they used to post, is now the, the brand. So you go to OneLoad, you create an account. And for something like you know, 50 bucks a month, right, you can upload your videos to OneLoad and then hit a button. And it'll send it out to the other, the other um, places where you have accounts. Because if you have a great piece of content you're putting it up to YouTube, it would be really cool to take the same piece of content and put it to five other video sharing sites. And then what you need to do, one second, is this. This is the important thing. Tag, 
title and describe what's in that video. The search engines don't know what's in the video. They can't look in the video. Okay. If you try to keyword load the tag title and descriptions, you're going to get dinged by, by the search engine. And of course, when I say the search engines, I mean the goop. Right? And so it's a little bit of a dance. It's trying it, testing the results, changing something, testing it, until you get it just where you want it. It might mean taking what looks to you like great tags, titles, and descriptions, taking some of that stuff out and having a little bit less. And then you go, oh, this per this, the, you know, the, the search engines have gotten really good about people f jamming content. Do you have a question? Yeah, um, mm -hmm. I know backlinks are extremely important for SEO. Does that work the same mm -hmm. way for videos? Mm -hmm. So this is what I was finding. Like Again, the example that I'll go back to is when I talk to social media at Jacksonville is other content of mine, once I posted these videos, right, where the, the, in the description I had links back to the website, other content of mine suddenly became more important and was starting to show up also that hadn't shown up when I did the pre-search. Okay? All that becomes important. Google is really trying, starting to understand your, what, what we call your content envelope that you create. All the content about you, right? And to the point now where it's, it'll ask you, hey, here's some content from Twitter. Is this, we think this is your account. Is it? Let us know. And we're going to filter search results based on the people that you know. All right, Dave, between the one loader and the YouTube, why would I, could you give me an example of why I would do the one loader? If I'm going on a search engine and I type in something, the YouTube video pops up anyway. You're going to use one load to take your video. You upload it to one load, and then you basically hit a button, and it takes that video and puts it to YouTube and Vimeo okay. and Vo and a whole bunch of other sites. Other than YouTube, and I'm kind of new at this, YouTube is the only one I've heard of. What, what benefit would it be to be on all the other ones? If someone's going on Google and typing up something, won't, won't the YouTube video? Oh, no, not at all. Here, let's go back to the example. Oh. All right. Daily Motion, YouTube, VO, Meta Cafe, another YouTube, uh, something.tv, because it was picked up from one of those, onefedia.com. Oh, you want to put it up as many different places as you can. But I want to make sure of helping him because mm -hmm. I have a feeling I know where he's coming from. Mm -hmm. There's the how many places you can pay for versus how many places those you are can all free. free. Uh, you said you have to pay for You have to pay for one load right, for 50 right, right. to have he's the ability. Balancing off right. And knowing the nature of his business, I know he's thinking the balance of. Right. For 50 bucks a month, I have an ongoing video program where I'm doing five videos a month. For 50 bucks a month, I'll take search results like this. The best 50 bucks you'll ever pay. 600 bucks a year? You want to hire me to do SEO for you? I'm not, I'm not picking on you. You're going to spend more than 50 bucks a month, trust me. Okay. But I have a quick question. Sure. Um, I have a web design and development company and I'm always telling my clients that they need to take videos, but like you said, they, they don't want to see themselves on uh, you know, on the camera. Right. How if, were there any Oh so you, so you have another like web agency? Yeah, yeah you have to leave. So these are <laughs> secrets. I'm joking, go ahead. Um <laughs> <laughs> here we are. Um, how has, has there been any studies done uh, as opposed to how effective the personal one-on-one, -on -one, someone talking into the, the camera as opposed to like a slideshow video? So again, the question is how effective the personal one-on-one -on -one versus a slideshow video. You want to know something? Just get your clients started. That's the key. The key is to do it. Can any of these things be better? Absolutely. Right? The key is to start getting that content out there. It is about the next decade, and when I say decade, I mean 18 months, okay, are about two things. Okay, I'm telling you this right now. These are the two things that the next decade, again, which means 18 months, are going to be about. Content and data. Okay? Generating, creating, curating content and what's now being called big data, which is combining your analytics with your social analytics, with your customer research, customer relationship management programs, with your, uh, all the data that you have about your customers to truly get them to do business with you. 
Those are the two main things that it's all going to be about. Just get them doing it, right? If that's what they're willing to do, then that's good enough. The key, again, is the tagging, titling, and describing. What is tagging? How do you do tagging? Well, so basically when you go to YouTube, you'll see it'll have like a title and then a description. And then below it'll be like some words. Oh, like it's words? Exactly. Okay. Hmm? Sure. I have a uh, my animation video for my company on, on YouTube, and I don't get many hits. You just have the one video? Yeah, but I'm, yeah, I, I'll have more. <laughs> I was curious. Right. It, you know, I had to put something on there. Yeah. If I change the description. Hold on a second. Yeah. Keisha. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. <laughs> I change uh, the listing right. under what it is. It might be a good experiment to see. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you know what we do? We go and we figure out, okay, we kind of know we want to do these keywords. <laughs> we go and we take a look on YouTube. What's the number one video on YouTube? What are they titling it? What are they describing it? What are the keywords? And we start there. I want to be number one. If they're, if they're number one, I'm at least going to be number two, and then I'm going to make it better so that I'm number one. Okay. Use what other people are doing. Chances are their content isn't really appropriate. All right? The, the, it's, it's, this is such an easy thing to do. Now, is it easy to sit there every day or twice a week and come up with what are you going to say? What are you going to do? So I have a question for you. Who can tell me why I had you do that wave? Thank you for advertising for me. <laughs> it's a marketing. My presentations are fun. You want, you're looking for someone for your conference? Look at the enthusiasm of this crowd. <laughs> I don't get usually paid for these things, so you can have. <laughs> okay? You don't have to do it. I mean, I have this big long blog post that I've been working on that we, we're going to get down to like three or four different ones. I recently bought a car. There's, there's like, I would rather have my teeth drilled through the top of my skull than go through the process of buying a car. There's nothing I hate more than buying a car. Okay? I had the most pleasant experience ever. Every step along the way, I did started it off online. I went in. The paperwork was waiting for there for me. And then it's like you deal with the sales guy. You sign up, then you go into the finance guy, and he's trying to shaft you, right? This guy was like, you know what? I'm not going to negotiate with you. In fact, I'm going to give you a better deal than your bank is. In fact, I'm going to give you the preferred deal. But, and he really did. The, the rate they gave me was absolutely incredible. The whole process. And I love my new car, OK? At any point, they could have said, hey, Murray, could you do a little video of how, what a great, you know? Because the whole thing for them was, OK, you're going to get a survey from us. Make sure you do like all 10s, right? Because if you do one nine, I can lose my job. Make sure you do all 10s. And that's all they care about. Do all 10s. Do all 10s. I'm like, oh, don't do all 10s. Don't worry about it. Okay? <laughs> At any point, they could have said, Murray, can you step into our booth and tell everyone what a great experience you have had at our dealership? Because I told them, I said, this was the best car buying experience I've ever had. I was in, I was out, I had a car. They found it for me, exactly the car I was looking for, it, a day earlier than they thought they could get it down from Orlando. I mean, it was a great experience. None of you know what type of car I have. None of you know what dealership is. Right? They, they didn't use, when we work with our clients, we talk about using the natural cadence of their business to help generate content. You close on a house. You have two sides that are be more than happy to say what a pleasant experience it was working with you. Right? I do a workshop. I'll go to every person in the workshop. And if they don't want to do it, that's OK. And I'll just say, hey, what's your name? What do you do? What did you learn here? Did you have a great time? How was the workshop? And I'll go to every person in the workshop, and I'll just do a little video. I'm using the natural cadence of my business to generate videos that I can use in our video program, which again, you know, we're an agency, so we don't actually do this stuff for ourselves, God forbid, right? So if that's what they are doing and they're willing to do that, that's, that's, that's enough, right? As long as you tag title and describe it and get the content out there. But that's why I did that. I'm absolutely going to use that video. 
you know, we're, we're, we're videotaping this. And, and I asked the um, center here, I'm like, do you mind if I have someone come to video? So, oh, we're doing it. I'm going to take this video. It's three hours long. Okay, that's 180 minutes. We're going to cut it into three minute segments. Okay, do the math. That's how many videos? 60. We're going to take each one, put it up to five sites. And ours. That's six. Right? How many pieces of content does this one presentation give us? A lot. Okay? That's one session that it's a, it's a year's worth of content. Okay? So it doesn't have, have necessarily have to be you doing it. It's the natural cadence of your business. What are the opportunities that you have in your business to actually ask someone to help you with this? You know, if you're attending an event, you know, if you're, you know, if you're going, like if you have a type of business where you go to like a health fair or something outside, take a camera, walk around, say, hey, are you enjoying yourself at the health fair? Hey, where are you helping to get it? Oh, look at that. Oh, cute puppy. You can generate at, a, at a, an event like that over the course of a weekend, six months worth of content. That's all. One of your clients shows up at that event. Generate video. And I'm not spending a lot of time on this. I'm telling you, this is the opportunity right now. All right. So what will you need? You need some camera, lighting, sound, simple editing software. Not a lot. Keep it real simple. If you have to splurge, sound. Sound is more important than video in video. Right? And if you don't believe me, have you ever had the situation where your TV picture went off but you could still hear it? You could follow along with the show. Have you ever had the opposite, where the sound went off, but you can see the picture? Which were you able to follow along the show better? The first one, right? Sounds more important than video in a video. Good sound makes better video. What will you say? Training videos, presentation, help how-tos, events, expert interviews, do contests, daily weekly thoughts, customer interviews. I mean, it almost doesn't really matter. As long as it's relevant. And we'll talk about relevance in a second. Let's go through. Start and do not stop. I'm telling you, at the end of the year, you'll dominate search. All right. You can take that video and you now combine it with some social PR. There's lots of places now for either free or for 100, 200, 300 bucks. You can put out a press release online. We had a workshop in Chicago. We'd never had a workshop in Chicago before. So trust me, when I typed in Chicago Social Media Strategy Workshop, we never came, did not come up in search. A video and a social press release, I don't, don't look at me, look over here now. 10 out of the 11 on Chicago Social Media Strategy Workshop. Okay. That's all that it takes. It's not a lot. Every single person who attended the workshop found it through search. Let's talk a little bit about authenticity. Yeah. Any of you all seen this?
Okay, you get the idea. So it goes on. Okay, describe one word. Contagious. Authentic. It's him. Any one of us could have dinner with Matt. He's exactly that person. I've seen him speak. That's who he is. Okay, what you would expect him to be like, that's who he is. It's authentically him. Okay? Authenticity is the key. You cannot fake it. We kind of get asked on, a, on an ongoing basis for our clients to manage their Facebook or Twitter, and it's like, no, it can't be us. It's not us. We'll help you set it up, and we'll help you create the program, and we'll make sure it integrates with the rest of your marketing, we'll make you more social, we'll help you with the natural cadence of your business. We are not going to be posting to your Facebook page, we are not going to be posting to your Twitter account, because it's not going to be authentically you. It needs to be authentically you. Okay? And there's no way around that. Your voice needs to be there as a person for your business. It's kind of antithetical, but the more personal you can make that voice, the better it is for your business. Right? One of the top travel blogs is by one of the cruise directors um, for Carnival Cruise Lines, where his cruises, the minute they come online, are sold out. Because he has just this incredible personality that he brings through with his, in his blog. Right? That's Carnival's big blog. Right? And it has to be authentically you. It's authenticity. By the way, he's built a career out of this now. There could well be. YouTube very often nowadays, the copyright. Copyright is becoming, especially with Pinterest, and that's why I said we'll see six months if they're still around. Copyright is becoming a huge issue. Okay? So, yeah, could well be. There are places online where you can go where, you know, like um, they have uh, sites where you can purchase for a little bit of money or get free images and stuff and video. They actually have sites for music. So you can do that for a very small fee. You can license music. Okay, it's not going to be you know the, the the latest U2 hit. Okay, but you can definitely license music. Sometimes you can just some of these artists, the ones who are kind of coming up, they may let you. Right, but yeah, YouTube can flag your video and, and take it down. You know, they have algorithms now to check the background sound to see if it's a song that's that, that's registered with them. Sound booth is actually really good about yeah. connecting directly with the other. Yeah. Sure. Who? In regards to the music, um, mm -hmm. would it be more pertinent to use an artist that's already known, or if you already have a contact so to speak, uh, who does beats or makes? If you can do something, you know, you know, again, if you can get, if, you know, with all of this, you need to be really careful with copyright. I'm telling you, it's going to become a huge issue in the next in the next decade. And again, when I say decade, I mean 18 months, right? There's a lot of stuff going on about copyright. You've got to be careful about this stuff nowadays. A couple of years ago, not so much. Yeah, I mean, there's all kinds of places nowadays where you can purchase music. It's not going to be, you know, um, you know, the, the latest U2 hit or Lady Gaga hit or something, but you can absolutely find something that you're looking for. If you have someone who can create music for you and license to you, uh, absolutely. That could become your thing, right? That's your thing is, you know, our latest song by, you know. Um, also with copyright, usually you want to go to the actual site and a lot of times they will have a description Outline, you
New content, content that's updated on an ongoing and regular basis. What is the definition of a blog? A website that has content that's updated on an ongoing and re regular basis. Oh my god, it's almost like it's a match. Now think about it. You're generating two videos a week. You're posting once per day during the work week. Five, five posts per week. You're generating two videos. What have you created by creating a video program? Two of those three posts. It's that simple. You only have to come up with three now. Right? You can come up with three things a week that you can find, that you can talk about, hire someone to write for you, put it in your voice. Absolutely. And that's what I'm saying is, back at the beginning, people start with Facebook. It's the wrong place to start. You gotta start with your content generation. What's our, pro what's our program to get content out there that's part of this overall program that we're trying to do? If you can do that, Facebook and Twitter and all that, that becomes easy. One post per day, every day, I'm gonna say it again, every day, two to three per week is fine. And I get it. You know, you can ask Takesha, she's on me all the time. How often do I create a blog post? No, never. I'm, I'm too busy, I get it, I understand. I know. It's tough, it's tough to do, it's tough to keep going, you gotta do it. You know, we have, you know, we talk all the time. We've got to do it. What's the plan? And we're starting to get back. We were doing it really well for a while. We got really busy with stuff. Kind of fell by the wayside. We're going to get back to doing it in such a way that we can actually keep it going. Okay? Two keys to a successful blog. Figure out why you're blogging. How does this fit in with your overall social media strategy? Consistency and frequency. Okay, you have to think of it as, a, you know, it's a television show. Tuesdays at 9.30, you watch that. Tuesday morning at 9 a.m., Thursday morning at 9 a.m., the posts will go out. Regular, consistent basis. Okay, so not only for the people that are coming, but for the search engines to know what your cadence is so they can come back and crawl your site. The third is a blogger outreach program. Find 100 relevant bloggers and establish a relationship with them before you actually need them. Everyone, for all of, your, all of the things that you do for business, there are 100 people that have great blogs already out there. Find them, engage them, comment, all the things that are up there. Okay. Um, you all heard of Harry Potter Studios? I'm not gonna play the video just for the sake of time. But basically, this is the power of blogs, and I get it, we're not Harry Potter. Um, do you know how much they spent on the PR for the initial announcement that they are, were going to be building Harry Potter, Studio, Harry Potter Village at Universal Studios? Do you know how much that cost? It actually wasn't zero. It was the cost of seven FedEx packages. What they did was they sent seven FedEx packages with non-disclosure agreements to the top seven Harry Potter bloggers in the world. And they said, you have 24 hours to get this NDA back to us. At that point, you will get a URL that you will have to go to at midnight the following day for a major announcement. So they all, if you were one of the top Harry Potter bloggers and you got something like that, <laughs> would, would you sign it and send it back? And would you keep it to yourself? No. So these seven people signed it, got it back. Well, the rumors started circulating in those 24 hours. Something's happening. What's going on? Something's going on. If you were not one of those seven people, you didn't know you weren't one of those seven people, but you were kind of watching because you figured you knew something you heard. Something was going on. Those seven people watched the video that's up there, which is basically one of the VPs at Universal and someone from the Harry Potter side talking about this thing they were going to be built, which is now Harry Potter Village. Seven people heard about it. Within 24 hours, they estimate that 350 million people heard about Harry Potter Village at Universal Studios in Orlando. Power of blogs. Okay? Find those top bloggers in your area. Engage them. There is a reason that Chris Brogan knows who I am. Yeah. They have to give them anything for that? Nope. They were just happening. Hey, what? So, so, so this video ran from 1201 to 1210. What happened at 1211 that night? Seven, what's that? Seven blog posts went out. What do you think happened by 1215? A hundred more went out. 
right? And it just exploded from there. I think something could be emphasized, and that is like the NDAs were, you know, supposedly to get these people not to talk about it. Yeah, Supp supposedly. Because, I mean, people, they were like, there was buzz about something going on. What's going on? What's happening? <laughs> well, you know, so. Well, they were able to blog about it after the announcement. Oh, okay. After they watched the video, they could tell what, say, say whatever they want. So they just got them chomping at the bit, thinking, what's coming, yep. what they doing? Yep. All right. Going a little bit fast here, because I knew we would be running out of time. All right. Twitter. How many of y'all are on Twitter? Cool. All right. My, uh, not Twitter. My, uh, my business partner basically made me drink the Kool-Aid. <laughs> so I'm on Twitter now. I've uh, been on for about three months. Does, does it cost you money to be on Twitter? No, it doesn't cost you money. I don't know how you... <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't know how it works. Penny for every edit. <laughs> <laughs> you, Dave. I don't know. What? Are you on Twitter? No, no, I don't know. I can't afford, I can't afford it. <laughs> I don't know anything about the Twitter. I am, I am on Twitter. In fact, I, I can Twitter right now. Now, you right now, you could launch this and it would go, where would that go? All over the world. Really? Yeah. I've been on now three months and I have, people follow you, or you can follow people. I have over 800,000 people following me. Now, right now, Dave, what would you like to say to 800,000 people? Because you'd never get that many watching it. night. <laughs> Just, uh, uh, I, I'm curious, I'd like you to like know, what would you like to well, say? Well, how much does it cost? <laughs> <laughs> Dave, I'm going to give you the summer special. <laughs> just uh, just uh, uh, hi, kids. Dave says hi. Now you have to do that with your thumbs. <laughs> <laughs> you are not only the cheapest man in show business, you're the laziest well, man in show business. Now, but when I learned to type, I used uh, all ten, all ten digits you would type with. And that's how I type, and, and so I'm not going to I'm do using thumb. Yes. Okay, Dave says hi on Letterman. Mm -hmm. Updating, sending your tweet. Now, where does that go? It goes all over. Anyone who's following me. Anyone following me in the audience? <laughs> Success! All right. So that was it. That's <laughs> it. And now, I'll get, in about uh, an hour, right. lots and lots of people saying hi back. <laughs> From that all really, over the world. That people really don't is a even, miracle. People that don't even <laughs> all right. <laughs> so, how is Twitter used? You know, you always see these things, these articles about, oh, there's five ways to use Twitter for business. There are seven ways to use Twitter for business. Uh, forget about all the fluff around it, but basically, it, to me, it comes down to this, right? You're going to use Twitter to either disseminate or gather information. It's, it's the ones that are circled in red. To do customer service networking, manage your business, or generate traffic back someplace. I mean, those are the main ways that you would use Twitter as part of a program, right? Um, who's not on Twitter? I mean, it's just becoming a fundamental way that, of, of that, that life and business is being done. Uh, and again, I don't think that, you know, there are absolutes with all this social media stuff that you have to be on this platform, you have to be on that platform. But I'm telling you, the, in most industries these days, the people that are on Twitter, even to this day, are the ones that you want to engage with. Okay? They're the ones at the forefront, I'm telling you. And I once had a client say to me, you know, I'm not going to do this Twitter thing, but when the next thing comes along, I'll do that. <laughs> and my response back was, if you're not doing this Twitter thing, you're not going to get the next thing. You're not going to understand it. Right? Because these things are kind of incremental. If you're not doing Facebook or LinkedIn, you don't get what it is about Pinterest that makes it so interesting. Right? You need to be in there today to understand the thing that's going to come tomorrow. So. I was just going to share a quote from, mm -hmm. um, Ralph Waldo Emerson, and he says, do not go where the path may be. Go instead where there's no path and leave the trail. So yeah. it kind of just caters to what you're saying about. We have to create the trails. Yeah. The trailblazers, this is very new stuff, but if you come in and you just start fresh and naive, 
you may very well be the top one in your areas because Absolutely. someone else is doing it. Without a doubt. Would you suggest that with people, because like for me, like I don't want to I'm sorry? I don't want to follow anybody where you're getting interrupted by stream of thoughts which are pretty much meaningless. So a lot of times is that a better strategy? Join it just to join it, but really don't start like as soon as you like somebody on Facebook. You just start getting update after update. Okay. Yeah, so, so we'll talk about that specifically okay. in Facebook. Okay. So think of Twitter as a river of content that's flowing by you. And are you going to stand in a river all day trying to catch you know, every piece of content? No. What you're going to do is every now and then, you're just going to go for a quick swim. You're going to dip in, get some content, maybe leave some of your own, and you're going to come out and dry yourself off and go do something else. You have to think of Twitter that way. Right? You're not going to catch everything. But that's why you have, when we talked in the beginning, that listening station, right? where at your leisure, which you no longer have time for, because you're doing this, you can go through and say, what did, I, what did I miss last night? What did I miss this morning? And you know, maybe you do it twice a day. I mean, I basically do it twice a day, in the morning and in the evening. Right? In the morning before like, the family goes to school and does whatever they do, I'm sitting there and I go through real quick. And then in the evening, while I'm sitting there watching TV, I'm just going through all the different things, seeing what I missed. What right? is, are you segregating into something that's important, or is it kind of like CNN news flash? Well, you can get pretty quick. You pretty quickly will sit and learn. Like, like I said, I use Flipboard. Right? But you, even just using Twitter and going through it, you can pretty much know eventually who the people are that are going to be posting cool things. And if you, if you get to be really good at just scanning down, oh, that's interesting. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, that's interesting. You get to be really good about just getting rid of the crap that's out there. Because there is a lot of crap that's out there, without a doubt. Any other questions before we move on? All right, yeah. Absolutely. Stumble upon Tumblr without a doubt. Again, it's a time factor and it's a what are you using it for? Right? If you have the time and you're, you know, you're using it, is one better than the other? My, my, my wife follows um, uh, the Pure Bar. She was a dancer and did all this dance stuff. And there's, uh, anyone do the Pure Bar thing? Which are these late, the hot, latest um, uh, uh, kind of gyms for women where they do, it's based on dance. Right, it's it's um, fitness based on dance, and they did this thing where they built a tremendous following on Facebook, right? And then they did this thing where she's like, "I've got to get on Twitter now," and I was like, "Really, awesome!" And she's, I said, "Why?" She says, "Well, this Pure Bar thing says they're no longer posting their daily contests on Facebook; they're posting on Twitter, and everyone needs to follow them on Twitter." And I thought to myself, "What are they, freaking idiots?" They built a huge following where they were literally driving business on Facebook and now they're trying to convert them over to go to Twitter? No, 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 no. I said, go on their page and post and say, my, my husband does social media strategy and he thinks you guys are idiots, you should really call him. Okay, which she has yet to do. But basically, my wife this week got on Twitter so she could do their daily, and she's like, I hate this. Why would you take your audience that's on Facebook and try and move them somewhere else? Keep your audience on Facebook and build an audience of other people on Twitter. They're getting bad advice from an agency somewhere. It's a time thing. You can't be on every platform. You just can't do it. Right? So yes, should they be using Tumblr? Absolutely. That's a great, great platform. Right? Tumblr, until Pinterest came over, Tumblr was actually driving more traffic to other sites than Facebook. Right? That's fallen off a little bit since Pinterest came. And things like StumbleUpon, the social bookmarking, absolutely should part, be part of the program. So think of it this way, the general rule of thumb for every hour of content that you spend creating the content, you're going to spend eight hours promoting it. That's the rule of thumb. Okay. Showed you TweetDeck earlier. Another tool that we use is Hootsuite. And what this allows us to do is, as TweetDeck does, schedule posts, right? But it also allows us to do it in a team environment. Where, you know, like Dakisha and I, we can be seeing what other people are doing with each other, what we're each doing, and modifying other things, assigning people. So it allows a little bit more of a, t of a team environment. If you have multiple people in your organization, you probably want to do something like Hootsuite. It runs in the browser, which means you can have it anywhere. That you have a browser, which is really cool. You like Hootsuite better than TweetDeck? I used to really love TweetDeck. Um, it's, it's become this massive resource hog. Every time I turn it on, my machine just grinds to a halt. 
Right? So I've stopped using it. So we use Hootsuite a lot more. I still use um, um, TweetDeck. And uh, there's this other tool that I started using a lot now called Buffer. It's bufferapp.com. And basically, it allows you to set up a cadence. And then you just throw content at it. Because what you'll see very often, you can see, you know when people are on Twitter or Facebook, right? Because there's like 10 posts in a row. <laughs> and it's like, I don't want to see you 10 times in a row. I want to see you every now and then. What Buffer lets you do is we find a lot of content that we like to distribute out is I've set up schedules on all these different platforms. And I just throw it at Buffer. And then it just puts into the next slot. Because while we've been here, I've probably had three or four posts go out on my Twitter account, the Bistegra Twitter account, my Facebook page, the Bistegra Facebook page, my LinkedIn account. right? And they're adding others. While we're here, then it looks like I'm actually out there like sending this stuff out. Okay. Some final Twitter th thoughts. Uh, once a day, not necessarily once an hour. Again, it depends on what you're trying to do. It depends on the business that you're in. Uh, an hour, an hourly could be appropriate. But does it aggravate you? Um, and, and I'm just asking aggravate or aggregate? Aggravate you regarding, like, let's say, the mommy bloggers and stuff, or just having conversations? I mean, I, I don't mind it. I'm having a lot of mommy blogger friends. But I, I, I did see one social media. Um, How cute are they? No, I didn't say that out loud. One social media guy was very <laughs> aggravated that they weren't posting like real content. They were just high. It's high real high. simple. I can't wait to have a martini. Unfollow. Just unfollow. If you don't like what I'm posting, let's take it from the other side. Let's take it from the other side, from the mommy blog, those mommy bloggers. If people don't like what they're posting, they should just unfollow them. You're going to post what you think is the right thing to generate the business that you're trying to generate. Someone who, I love it. I actually love it when people unfollow me or people unsubscribe for our email. You want to know why? I never have to waste a minute of time on those people again. They would have never become my client. They just would have never. There's not a mesh. If they don't like what I'm putting out there, there will never be a meshing of us coming together with them to do business. Bye bye. I don't have to be everyone's friend. So put out there what, what it is. Put out there what's appropriate for you and your business and the clients that you're going after. Without a doubt. Let people go. Okay? Sure. But for app, is that um what's the monthly cost on that? Or is that just It's free. Well it's free, but then there's an, you know, we pay like I don't know, some minuscule amounts. But you know, so, you know, because we're doing a lot more in kind of a team environment. All right. All right, one more thing. I'm Dan from College Humor, and this is Real Life Twitter. I think I fall in love with 10 strangers a day. Sign. First person to touch me gets free tickets to my next improv comedy show. I have seven things by Miley Cyrus stuck in my head. She is such a talent. Finally checked out the College Humor show. Matt, finally got around to reading Jurassic Park, the book version. I'm on page 18. It is good. <laughs> Let's try this new Colgate Wisp. Anyone want to kiss? Nine dollars for organic spinach. Turn me up all right. Just watched the view this morning. Not so bad. Everyone's having pictures of my cat. Just got to New York City. What are good things to see and do here? F it. I'm just going to start calling gyros heroes. <laughs> the guy next to me has some crazy VO. Somebody get some speech to come in here. Stat. <laughs> Don't be that guy. Okay? Nobody wants to be following that guy. So actually, do you know what that video is? What do you think that video was? Did you catch it? It was funny? But what is it? That's paid ad for what? For Wisp, for that Wisp thing. That was a paid advertisement for College Humor Did for the Colgate Wisp. Uh, you, the stuff you see online, some of that might be paid advertising. Hey, those viral videos, well, guess what? Paid advertising. Do you really think that the, y'all remember last, last year, the, um, the uh, um, Old Spice 
that viral thing that happened online with all those celebrities tweeting, you know, that whole, yeah, did you all see that? You think that just happened? <laughs> what was her name, the, the celebrity who kicked it off, the one who used to be on the show with Tony Danza? Um, what's that? See, I can't hear. Alyssa Milano. Alyssa Milano kicked it off with a, you really think she wasn't paid for that initial tweet? I have no evidence, but I <laughs> bet it was. I bet that was paid. The things that you see online that are viral are paid, adver paid, paid campaigns. Don't have any doubt. All right, LinkedIn. Y'all are on LinkedIn, right? And if you're not, you should be. All right. LinkedIn for business. It focuses pretty much on people, not so much companies. You can source vendors, partners, employees, and customers. I showed you the example earlier from that key group consulting for the HR consulting firm. Absolutely, without a doubt, you can drive business using LinkedIn. And you, you said you'd kind of do that. I would say anybody B2B has to be there. I don't know about B2C. Anyway. Well, again, so B2C depends what you're selling. Right? You don't necessarily have to be using it to sell to a customer or maybe find a vendor, or find partners. I mean, there's other things that you can do right? if you have a true um, consumer-focused product. Yes? So say that I find with LinkedIn at least that it is the, for me, the most quality environment where maybe the Twitter, everybody's going crazy because everybody at LinkedIn really isn't going crazy. Yeah. It, it seems to be very more quality, less volume, more quality. It, it, to me, LinkedIn needs a little bit more of uh, that social interaction capability. It's almost there, almost there. They're adding it slowly, it's almost there. It needs a little bit more. And then it'll you know, do, fulfill its promise, I think. But yeah, I, I, th I agree. All right. Here's another example. Uh, global insurance professionals, 15,000, um, owned by this guy called Kumar Utpal, who sells, guess what? Insurance, uh, insurance software. Created a group of 15,000 people. Does he sell to all of them? No. I mean, how many extra sales a year from this group of people does he need to do to have a great year? I don't know, a couple? And if you are someone who sells services to insurance professionals, guess what he's done for you? <laughs> he's created a market for you. Join it. Take part. Oh, by the way, did you know we have a new ver Did you know we're having a webinar? Oh, by the way, check out our video. All right, Facebook. Have you all heard of this thing? It's gotten really big. Yes. All right, everyone understands, if, because like a year ago, people still didn't get, understand it. Profiles, pages, groups, right? Not that, okay, business pages, multiple admins. And their analytics, they're actually launching new analytics, which is much more real time than it has been. I mean, their analytics is getting better. Um, SEO, they opened it up and then they, they closed it. So not so much anymore, right? They're having this fight with Google. Do you know what the fight actually is? Both Facebook, what's that? Didn't, didn't um, Facebook steal their personal network for them, Google for their ads? That lady? Yes, but no, that's not what their fight is. Their fight is they both want to become the platform. They both want to be the platform that everything runs on. Facebook doesn't necessarily want you to come to the site. They want the site to follow you everywhere you go. Google doesn't necessarily want you to come to the site. They want you to be logged into Google everywhere you go so that they become the platform. That's what the fight is between the two of them. Okay? It's a, it's, we're talking ownership of the world. And I'm not really exaggerating here. Okay. Both. What's that? I'm sorry. It do, it's starting to look like with the new platform for Facebook that they don't even you don't even need a web page almost. They want to be your web page. Right. What's the issue with that? I'm not sure. You, don't own, own you right. don't own it. You don't own it. They can take it away from you. There is no 800 number to call if they do, because people break. Have Have any of you read the terms of service on Facebook? No. <laughs> do you have business pages on Facebook? And you haven't read the terms of service? Really? How many of you have business accounts on Twitter? Yeah? You're breaking Twitter's terms of service. And they can take it away from you anytime. Hmm. Okay. You don't own it. You need to have your own presence. 
without a doubt. So why would people come to your page? Uh, I don't know. Because they're not. <laughs> they're not going to come to your page. Why? This is what Facebook is, as someone back here was talking about. There should be a video that's playing there. Hello? Okay, well, there's not a video that's playing there. Take it away. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> All right. So here's a page. This is actually one of our clients. We, we developed this for page. Oh, by the way, this is going away. It's all going to be changed within 27 days. So if you have a page, it will be radically different 27 days from now. It changes all the time. Last year at the online marketing summit in San Diego, I led the Facebook day. And I'm sitting there, you know, I'm at the Panera right there by where the conference is being held the day before the Facebook day, right? And I have my big long day long presentation all on Facebook. And I open up and I get an announcement hey, guess what? Facebook is changing. <laughs> and my 200 Facebook slides were no longer valid. Like that. You don't own it. You don't own it. Hmm? When you say change, what do you mean by like just as far as the formatting? Of formatting. So this kind of format, it's going to start looking like the profile. So they change the profiles to look with the, the stream. So your slides, you're telling me, yeah. The time? Hmm? You're telling me your slides were lost forever. The work well, they weren't. No, they weren't lost. They were just not representational of what Facebook was anymore. Because they, Facebook changed. Right? It's really hard to keep up with all these different platforms. They change all the time, and they're not going to tell you about it necessarily ahead of time. Or they'll give you, like Facebook gives you 30 days. I mean, what actually happened there was they turned this on for everyone. There was such an uproar that they turned it off and said, OK, we'll give you 30 days. The last time they did this. All right? It's not just for the big guys. I mean, here's a cupcake shop that has 16,000 people. So they were kind of languishing along, not really doing anything. And then some woman brought her kids in. One of the kids was eating a cupcake and got it all over his face. And they took a picture and said, would you mind if we post this to our Facebook page? And the mother said, sure. And guess what she did when she went home? She told all of her friends, hey, look, my son's over there. And so people went, and now they're driving business with their Facebook page. Again, if you have a business that requires people to walk in to transact with you, you can absolutely use these pages to help drive that business, drive incremental traffic. Right? Insights, like I said, this is getting better all the time. Still not necessarily where it needs to be. You don't own it. You know, I mean, they change it all the time. The features that you think were there, the terms of service will change. Um, anyone have anyone here run a kind of promotion? So first of all, anyone here have a fake profile that they've built pages off of? Yeah, really? That's breaking Facebook's terms of service, and I know major brands that have had their pages removed because of that. Okay, if you have a fake profile, it's created a page. Facebook sees it. They're just going to delete it, and there is no one-to call anymore. Not that there really ever was. Uh, contests and rules. Anyone ever uh, either done a contest where someone had to like your page to enter? Have you done that? No? Or seen that? Yeah. That's breaking Facebook's terms of service. The act of liking a page or a piece of content is against the rules on Facebook. Okay, you cannot have the act of doing that as the entrance entry form into a, con into a contest. And they're getting pretty strict about this. Why? Because they want you to buy advertising. So some tips. You know, getting the like is just the beginning. Because I'm telling you, they're not going to come back to your page. That's not why people go to Facebook. People don't go to Facebook to interact on the BizTegra page. As sad, as much as I would like them to, it's just not what they're there for. Right? That other video kind of showed what they were there for. Right? Um, their, your community manager needs to be someone that has a personality, knows the audience, and definitely has the skill set. You know, very often, a lot of organizations will bring in an intern you know, and say, oh, that person, we'll just give it to them. Oh, that's wrong. Okay, because you can get into a lot, there's a lot of case studies out there of companies that did that, and the interns were like, well, let's just say, used language that wasn't appropriate, said things that weren't appropriate, and people don't care that it was an intern. They get, the brand is talking here. 
right? Social shopping, yeah, we were talking about that a year ago, uh, not so much anymore. Some of the big uh, retailers have actually eliminated their shopping on Facebook. It's not really happening, all right? So that's not really a big push. So who are you actually, I don't know where this video, what happened here either. Who are you actually competing with? Right. Am I just not like, connected to the, yeah, I'm connected. I know. Give me a second. Yeah, I gotta love that PowerPoint. Well, it's because I wasn't connected to the internet when I brought the, the PowerPoint up, so. I know, but I enabled the content, but these were still not showing up. Let's see if it shows up. Yeah, here we go. Oh. Status update. Jim is at work early. Mondays are the worst. Status update. I had a lot of fun this past weekend. Met someone really special. Relationship status. I am in a relationship. Status update. Had a totally lame blind date this weekend. U G H. Ugh. Okay. Relationship status. I am now single. <laughs> Jim. Chad Bauer has requested to be your friend. You have three friends in common with Chad Bauer, Jim. Would you like to confirm, deny, or ignore this request? Firm, I guess. Okay, I'm gonna pause it just for the sake of time. Basically, when you're on Facebook, as someone said over here said, they don't want to see the crap from the people they know. You really think they want to see the crap from your business? No. You gotta make it, re to, to you do Facebook successfully, you gotta make it really engaging somehow with the right audience. And that's not easy to do, okay? You know, like I said, we don't necessarily do a lot on Facebook with our clients. I think there's other places that you can spend your time. I'm not saying not to. Again, it depends on your business. Because um, who you know, I don't wonder who you're truly competing with. Can everyone handle a little bit of an f bomb? <laughs> yeah. This is who you're truly competing with. <laughs> She's a popular pop singer in the UK.
All right. Thank you. That was really good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're competing with every jerk she's ever dated. <laughs> I, I, I'm telling you, people don't want to see our. Uh, they, I, I don't you know. Think of when you're on Facebook. Right? You don't want to see stuff from your friends. You're tired of seeing, oh, look at the picture of my kid wearing a hat. You know? yeah, we're tired of that already at, the, at this point. This was true two years ago. It's even worse now. Right? <laughs> How many people have you kind of unfollowed? Like you didn't unfriend them, but you hit the little thing on the right-hand side where you're no longer following their status updates. Right? Do you really think they want to hear from you when they're it's at nighttime or the morning and they're on Facebook? Do you really think that they're looking for you? No. They're not. Sorry, unless you're making it really, really engaging content. So, let's move on real quick. We'll be done in a couple of minutes. A couple of minutes over. Okay, let's talk about some other platforms. Google Plus. So, how many of you all are on Google Plus? There's an absolute play there. It's called SEO. Okay? Post on Google Plus to increase your search rankings, let people find you. If you look right here, right, here's content from our blog, which, from my blog, right, that's what you're looking for from Google Plus, okay? It's a search, it's an SEO play at this point, okay? That's, what, that's how you need to be approaching it. Search engine optimization. Pinterest, anyone who was pinning? Okay, that, that's willing to admit it. Again, similar thing, driving more traffic right now than any site that's out there. Okay, until it crashes and burns, I mean, until it really starts taking off, <laughs> something you should look at, figure out, it might, be, it might be appropriate for your business. There are people, though, that are doing what we do for a living, that are using Pinterest to post stuff that are driving traffic. Okay, people are starting to, you know, it's there, it's gotten big. It's the new bandwagon, jump on. Don't hurt your ankle as you jump on a bandwagon though. Okay, these things are time consuming. All right. So, platform marketing. At least in terms of Facebook and LinkedIn and now even Twitter. You can use the fact that they have had the people that are on those platforms self segregate themselves into groups and think of what you do when you join one of these platforms. What's the first thing you do? You tell them everything about you, your name, your location, your age, your marital status, your income, your friends, the things you like, the things you don't like, your interests. You tell everything and you can target from an advertise, so maybe Facebook is not right for you as a platform where you build a presence, but maybe you can find people that you can target. So I was leading this Facebook day, like I said, at the Online Marketing Summit last year and at lunch. Um, at the same time, we had the Facebook thing, they had a Twitter thing and a LinkedIn thing going. At lunch, I was sitting next to the woman, we started talking, what are you doing? So I'm leading the Facebook day, and she goes, oh, I really wanted to do the Facebook, but I'm doing Twitter instead. I said, oh really, what do you do? She goes, I work for this company. She gave me the name. I'd never heard of it. I said, what do they do? She goes, we make dehumidifying conveyor systems. Do you know what a dehumidifying conveyor system is? I mean, I didn't either. But she explained it to me. And if you all have dogs and you have dry dog food, for instance, that you feed them, well, it doesn't start off dry. It starts off as wet dog food. And it goes through a football field long conveyor system that dehumidifies it. And the other end comes dry dog food. These are like a million bucks a pop, if not more. I'm like, why in the heck would you want to be taking the Facebook track? And she said, I can't tell you how much business we're driving by targeting industrial engineers on Facebook with advertising. These are marketing vehicles. Use them like that. You can target geographically, demographically, interest. I have an interesting example that's happening for us. We set up a meetup page for running. Mm -hmm. And they don't really want to talk on the meetup page. They want to link through Facebook to a secret group. Right. But it seems like it's just there's people just funneling into this secret group and they're happy and it's all very grassroots. Yeah. But my problem is I have to friend them all. Is that the only way to do it? Because I mean, all of a sudden you're, you're right. I've got well, if, you have, if you're doing a group or something. 
you know, you're doing a group, but, but you know, let's say you're, you, what, what's the business that you're in? It's um, a running group, we'd be running. Okay, you can target runners in the geography, you, tar you, know, you don't have to be a member of the group, just target runners with ads. They just want to talk, you know, they want to run. <laughs> so they're Yeah, so you know, if you have to friend them, you have to friend them. If that's, if that's the price it takes, you know, there's this whole thing of, you know, personal versus business, that line's gone, folks. Line's gone. Okay, now I have a lot of people, oh, I don't want to get my personal mixed up with my business, you know, on Facebook. And I said, okay, do you, what I usually say to people is, have you ever taken a client, I'll get to you in a second. Have you ever taken, was you, who was it? Yeah. Have, you, have you ever taken a client or a prospect out for dinner? And they say, yes. I say, well, why? Oh, so we can get to know each other better as people so that maybe when they're looking to buy, they buy from me because people buy from people, is what they would say. And I'm like, what better way for someone to get to know you and you to get to know them than to be friends on Facebook? Facebook will tell you when it's their birthday, you'll never forget. Something's going on with their kids, with their mom, they're taking a vacation. You can, you can track all this. Facebook is one long dinner conversation, right? Forget about that whole business versus personal. If you're doing this to drive your business, which if you have your own business, that is your life, right? That's the way to do it. Friend them all. They're just, yeah, they're just sell, you know, eventually sell to them. Okay. Considering the fact that they can take away what you put on there, that's one of the reasons why I stayed away from all of it. Yep. Uh, which one is the soundest one that out of all the time? Drive them to a website or get their email that if they should ever take it away from you, you have a way to contact them say, hey, we're now over here. So keep it purely as just a gateway. To a gateway to something of your own, without a doubt. That's exactly how I talk about it to our clients. It's a gateway. But from an advertising perspective, these people have self-segmented. Awesome. I don't know if I something, but I think that Google Plus, if you link it to your Facebook account, it actually takes all that information and stores it in Google for you. Yeah. <laughs> so you can make it follow from, from my tablet on Google and yeah. all that stuff. I know. So it's great. All right, big finale. Only going to be 15 minutes behind. Here it comes. You ready? This is it. Oh, the case study. Oh, get to the big finale in a second. Um, let's, let's go to the big finale. Okay, big case study integrating offline, online. We did something for, for our client Wilson at that uh, last, not this past year, the year before at the Australian Open um, where we used real world, we used email, we used social. We drove, you know, a tremendous amount of email registrations with an over 90% open and click through rate to something on Facebook where people were spending 45 minutes, if not longer, interacting with the brand with something we built for them. Awesome. It was, it was incredible. Because we started from what is it you're trying to do? Right? And what do we have available to us? Okay, so they had a promotion going on at the time which was this ad this, that they had. Anyone tennis fans? Have you seen the big yellow couch from, from Wilson? Right? Those ads that they had where they actually had a couch made of tennis ball material. So they had some of the, you know, their top stars, right, were, um, would drag the couch out onto the court and like have like a therapy session with someone playing tennis. I mean, they're really cool. So we used that. We used the fact that people like to take pictures on it. But what we did was we took the picture instead of allowing people to, in exchange for their email, we uh, um, had them take their pictures and they, we told them while they were sleeping in Australia, we were working here getting their pictures onto Facebook into this application. So the next day they had an email waiting for them telling them exactly where they needed to go to go to Facebook to find their picture. We had like 3,000 pictures in a day, right? Something like that. We showed it to them 16 at a time. So they had to spend the time with Wilson finding their picture. Because what did we do with their picture? We added in their favorite tennis star to the picture. Right, so once they found it, they posted it to their wall. They did all kinds of things with it. They saved it to the Wilson wall. You know, we're talking like major engagement with a tremendous, th Australia has like 22 million people. Of those 22 million, I don't know, there's I don't know, a million people of those that like tennis. I gotta think it's that high, right? We had thousands of email registration. We basically got the entire Australian tennis fan base through this promotion. What are you trying to do? We want to capture emails of people who are tennis fans in Australia. And we did it. 
okay, in a fun and engaging way. Tremendous results, uh, lots of insights, blah, blah, blah. Okay, bring it home. Here it goes. This is what it all boils down to, everything we've been talking about. A weekly schedule. Woo! No? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this is it. This is actually scheduled for one of our clients. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, Photo Bucket, LinkedIn. Yeah, I know. Social media is fun, huh? If you don't do this, you don't do this. What are you doing every day? What's the schedule? How do you know if you're behind? It's, it, this is a Word document. That's all this is. People are like, oh, can you send that to us? I mean, it's a table in Word. Use Excel. You know, use a whiteboard. All right? You got to do this. How many of your clients actually stick to their uh, Some of them, actually. Absolutely. We had one client that they, they had a full-time equivalent that was doing their social stuff, and then somebody who was helping out during crunch time, and he did what I said. I'm like, post this on the outside of your cubicle, and as you do something, check it off. Why? So the CMO, as he walks by, was like, wow, look at all the work that you're doing. Or you need to do a little more work, or do I need to get you more help? These things are time consuming. Okay, But if you don't do this, you don't do it. It's, it, it needs to be part of your daily day. All right. All right, I'm done. Seriously. Thank you. <laughs> oh, let's do that again. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> oh, wait, wait. I don't really want to be get the clapping when I say I'm done, because that's like. <laughs>